Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Welcome to the TMC for JFC show. I feel um, good about that. Yeah. Hey, we are doing something new on this episode. Uh, JMC is on the uh, sound effects. So, way to go, JMC, for a pretty good um, intro. Thanks. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Lots to remember to do at the same time. Yeah, you see. I'm glad I didn't have to talk through it, too. Yeah. (laughs) Not yet. Well, now. That's step two. I have to fix it now because what's happening is when we come in, I'm all like this. So, what everybody sees when we fade in is basically... Me all like, what up, what up, what up, what up? We have to get you a cool tattoo for that side of your arm. Exactly. Maybe it's say the TMC for JMC. Right there. Like Maybe. And it'd be like TMC for JMC. Mm-hmm. Oh, dope. Yeah, yeah. that would be too. Yeah. That would be awesome. I mean, you know. I, EST. It is. Yeah, exactly. You know, I. it is my decision, I guess. It's my mm-hmm. my body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am for, you know. You know, your rights for your body, you know, it applies to, I guess, dudes and tattoos as well. Can you do me a fan? What's that? Can you hit that fan? Oh, yeah. Cool. Thanks. You're the best. Uh, no, it's not going to happen. Uh, I, can't, I can't get the fan. I can't get the fan. Cool All shirt, right. by the way. Oh, thank you, baby. I really like that. Oh, you're the awesomeness. Uh, you're the awesomeness oh, yeah, ever. Yeah, TMC for JNC Stroll. You see how the sausage is made. <laughs> Sometimes it requires turning off the fan. Let's talk <laughs> all these terminologies. But yeah, yeah. Thank you, baby, for complimenting on the shirt. It's uh, I think yeah, it's, it's really of, cool. I think it's kind of fitting, man. Like you know, for today, for the 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 mood that the country is in, for the mood that I'm in, um, it's just one of those. You know, I still hear A to the O. You do? Yeah. You know what? I have great hearing. You do. You're like, Cause that is like decibels low. Super like super low. What mm-hmm. about your? Uh, what about the clapping, the applause? Mm, I don't hear it. Oh, okay, cause we kicked. Uh, I thought I kicked them out of the void. I thought I kicked the band out too, but yeah, it takes a while to calm them down. Yeah, they be so freaking. I'm so you know, rowdy. Yeah, so what was but that? I like that. You know what I mean? They, they, they're. To hype you up a little. Hype man, you know, I'm like, mm-hmm. you guys in? And you're like, yo, he told you. I'm like, calm down. Calm down, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just chill the fuck out. So, how you been, baby? I'm okay, you know, trucking yeah. along. Yeah. You know, as good as good can be, I guess, right now. <laughs> it's just, there's, it's, everything is just so much right now. It's heavy. Yeah. You know, it's super heavy. We're going from this pandemic to, you know, the tragedies that all seem to happen all at the same time. Indeed, indeed. You know, and it's, um, man, it's and like just when you're down, like, what the fuck? Well, we have a good show uh, for mm-hmm. everybody today. Um, we weren't going, I was going to go into like packages and things like that. But once again, I don't want to show where we're watching stuff and reacting to stuff. I want to yeah. show where we're talking about things. So, um, <clears throat> So we got some some decent stuff today. Uh, we're gonna speak to um, somebody needs to stand up and take on Trump, and um, you know uh, mm. we're gonna speak to someone today that you know. I'm not gonna go into it too much right now. It's, oh, it, it's just the intro right now. It's all about, okay. It's all about you and how you've been doing. But, yeah, yeah, we got something cool. Um, good, good, you know, uh, <clears throat> good. But, I can't wait. You know, like you, everything has been blah. You know, and. You know, uh, I think cabin fever also set in for just your average person. Uh huh. Um, I think it's even set in for our pets. You know, at the, I know. At this point, constantly being in, constantly having everything running, things are breaking down. Yeah. Um, you know, you get to learn more and more about your pets. They get to learn more and more about you. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing I've noticed is that they they are smart as hell. Oh yeah. They are super smart. Like, like, you know, I notice ways that they're th- of their intelligence and in observing how they communicate with each other and interact with each other, how they interact with us. Um, I know that a lot of things aren't just habit. You know, a lot of things aren't just repetition. Some things are actual communication through body language, through yes, through maybe even dare I say energy. You know, mm-hmm. and just things like that. Sometimes it's almost. 
it could be, it, it's almost so perfect that it's almost easy to believe that they just might understand the word itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And That's how they, sometimes they come off like that. And you know when I noticed it, when, um, when it, I mean, I always felt it, but it dawned on me when, um, one day when we were, uh, <laughs> we were, you know, getting it in. <laughs> Okay. One night we're getting it in, and you know, many times you know, the animals are just there. You know, it's like animals. They're just in the room. Poses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They feel the heat. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, you know when it's when it's done and blah blah blah. You know, sometimes you gotta go to the bathroom. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, and, and you know, the animals always follow us in. <laughs> Kitty cats, the doggies, you know, and I always notice that they they like to look in the toilet, and but <laughs> but they know that that wait I know uh -uh. they know that you're gonna pee, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like they're just sticking their head in the toilet so you could pee on their head, you know what I'm saying? No, I didn't pee on my dog <laughs> or the cats. I'm so, I'm so glad. I'm right so, but they, because they know, you know what I'm saying? So why, because there's been times like, come on guys, I got about to pee. And they're like, all right. But as I pee, you know, then they're kind of like, okay, cool. I know what you're doing. I just want to look, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. <laughs> but it dawned on me though, that there are times like we do what we do. And I mean, like the moment we're done doing what we do, they're right there. There would, they would go do whatever the fuck they want to do chill lay around mm -hmm. stand guard while we do what we do regardless how long it takes mm -hmm. they won't like be like in the mix like oh let me uh you know be in the mix while you do what you do they mm -hmm. respect when you do what you do right they stay out of your way the moment you're done it's like they know you're done <laughs> they're right back hey let's all get back in the pack bed and cuddle yeah but it wasn't even that moment it was, I went to stand up, and I mean, they're like right there. They're <laughs> all within my shit. And I was like, dogs will bite and sniff anything. Dogs, yes. Even cats will kind of be like, <laughs> with anything. <laughs> but not once have they ever done it to my dick. Stop. <laughs> ever. Like, and don't get me wrong, I used to have a fear that, yo, come on, like, you know, like, you know, I cannot you know? believe but it, it, it's been so casual for so long that, you know, I, I didn't think about it. And then the other day I thought about it. I'm like, these must be some smart creatures. They know my dick is my dick. <laughs> and it's not to be bitten off because they wouldn't want their dick bitten off. We have a bunch of boys in this house. Yeah, they're all boys. And they respect my dick. <laughs> They're like, okay, that's his dick, and he was getting it in with his, with mommy, and cool, you know what I'm saying? Mm, you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe I told the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You never thought about that? No. No, that doesn't happen to me. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> I, guess, I guess you don't have that bonding, that, that, that And I don't have a dick. <laughs> yeah, you, you, <laughs> so. don't, you don't have that relationship with them, you know, the way that I do, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, they have never... Never even, I, it just never crossed my mind in the most recent times that they were going to. Um, and I've never, never once have I thought about it. I've never observed it crossing their mind. So it wasn't like, you know, there's been a time where I'm like, whoa, and I just, just missed it. Ha ha, you know, but, but yeah. And, oh my and I was gosh. Like, hey, you know, yeah, they, they never. Right off my dick. Thank you know, goodness. It, Thanks, guys. I appreciate it <laughs> that you they, haven't. If they weren't intelligent, wouldn't they? No. Well, you're the alpha, too. Why would they challenge you that way? By biting off my dick? Yeah, if you're the alpha. But then that means they know it's my dick, and it's not just some piece of meat dangling in the in whatever. Like, you know what I mean? They know. They I, know what it is. I mean, They're I, boys. They I, know what it is. I, I, yeah, but... Exactly, exactly. Like, I get they know what my hand is. They've seen my hand, da 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 hand, 
give you food. And you know then know your feet or what you walk and on. My feet or what I walk on. But they have no reason to know my dick is my dick. It's not like they. they say it all I time. think they know your butt is your butt because you know you know they sniff each other's butts. All dogs sniff each other's butts. That's how okay. they get to know each other. And they, I think they think humans are the same way. You just sniff their butt so you can get to know them. I don't <laughs> think it works that way because we don't have their glands. Yeah. But you know, probably that's probably why we're such a mystery to them. Might be why they sniff <laughs> our feet as well. Yeah, true, true. But no, I've I've never had. I mean, I'm glad that it's worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that this was like an ongoing thought of it, yours. Just, uh, I don't know if it's been ongoing, but it it's been. I like to look for ways in which our I can observe their intelligence, and I believe this was just one of the ways in which, um, you know. I seen that, hmm, they they understand this world the same way that we understand this world. They just use it for a different way. They just have different parts, you know what I mean? To yeah, the yeah. I mean, you're right. A lot of it, um, I think they go off of actions and sounds a lot of times. Like at night when I'm ready to go to sleep. Mm hmm they know what the, you know, when you turn the TV off, it usually makes it, do you know, some kind of sound yeah. to tell you it's turning off. Um, and ours does that. And um, they know, for example, Bueno knows what that is. He knows the TV's being turned off and I'm going to sleep. Well, also, and on top of that, they kind of, I think like, they, they know those things because they use the tools that they have. Like their, their perspective is just different. Like, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about or contemplate the wonders of, or the wonders of having claws and a stinger that stings around us, but right. only being this big because we're not scorpions, you know what I'm right. saying? But scorpions do. Scorpions probably walk around like, hey, look at my little stinger, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'll sting your ass, you know what I'm saying? Like, you think they walk around measuring each other's stairs? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sniffing your thing like don't bite my stinger. <laughs> like how long is your stinger? <laughs> yeah. You know, because, Are you a four inch stinger or like a six inch stinger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, your shit curved to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody threw cut your stinger off. <laughs> it must have been a dog. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, so I wonder if scorpions have it that tough. Yeah. Damn scorpions. Long <laughs> long lived scorpions. I suppose. I guess. Although we have a lot of scorpions right now in our stuff. So uh, we're going to go to a little <laughs> break and we'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad they didn't bite it off. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but, uh, Aww, that's but so you, sweet. You know what else I like to lick a lot? <laughs> <laughs> um... Specs, yeah, boys, and Malo, <laughs> my doggies, they love to lick and they love to chew and they love to eat snacks and they love to do all those things. They love snacks, uh. and a real cool place that they can go to get those things is Hidden Closet. As and, oh, yes, and why is that? That's because right now you can sign up for BarkBox. Great deals and specials. Our boys have been getting Bark Box for a couple years now. That's why we have so many toys everywhere. <laughs> and that's why they're so in the way. And that's why they're so in the way. <laughs> and Specs loves ripping them all up and waiting for new ones to come in so he can rip those up too. Yeah. You know, and the little guys love their snacks. I think that it's so cool that each box comes with a theme. And that's the cool thing. We've been yeah. down with them. And the thing is, is, we've been down with them for about two, three years now. Yeah. And it's not like every year... Okay, January, you're going to get the same January no. toy. February, you no. the same. No, they switch it up every month of every month yes. of every year. So, Do you remember Chinese New Year? And we got a little um, con a Chinese food container and you yeah. opened it up and it had two little wontons oh, inside. Yeah. Oh, that squeaked. Oh my gosh. They have like the best toys. They're just so creative. So creative. My favorite one was the, uh, the, um, the airplane. Oh, the airplane. <laughs> that one was super cute. And like the, the luggage that came with it. Yes, there's so, so many of them that I don't even want to give them to play with because they're just so cute. But and not only that, but they also worked in the sense of 
they provide snacks and other yes. things that I wouldn't think of giving my my pet absolutely or, or looking into. Yeah. So definitely New check products, out uh, yeah. BarkBox. Uh, what are some of the deals they can get on the website? Um, they can get um, special offers now on your first month, um, your first box uh, oh, of your first. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you sign up for a full year, you can get it all at a reduced rate. Oh, Dope so City. Check them all out. Um, and if you like their products, you can get them mostly. There's a, They have a lot of sales on a lot of their natural products now. Um, their natural chicken bites and mm. things like that. And those are the kinds that Spexies love. So, yep, you get exclusive deals and you'll absolutely love it. And they treat your dog so good. Yeah, well, that's Hidden Closet. Uh, yeah, check them TMC out. for jamesy.com. Uh, check it out and I think you'll enjoy your yeah you, you definitely your doggy's gonna enjoy it at least so. try it out the first month you'll love it there's no commitment give it a shot folks yep <laughs> <laughs> We're back <laughs> to the TMC for JMC show. I'm your boy. Oh, we already introduced ourselves, so we're just coming back from break. There's only first to introduce ourselves again. Well, we got something special here for you guys. Uh, we have, you know, it's time for some change in this world. You know what I mean? And it, somebody has to step up. You know, and I know we got Biden and everything, but you know, Biden doesn't represent everybody. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't represent. Freshville, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. and what Freshville is is a place where you can be nice. You know what I'm saying? Where you can be you. You know what I mean? Where yep. where love love rules and conquers everything. You know what I mean? Where you know what? I don't even know if I should be the person that's kind of like explaining this. You know, I just want to uh, let Trump know, let everybody else and Biden know that there's somebody else out there oh. that that is coming for for this leadership thing to to turn things around. Okay. And uh, his name is Hefe Fresh Gabar. Oh. And we have him on the, on the, uh, on the air right now. You there, Fresh Hefe? Uh, hold on a second for a presidential candidate for Fresh Gabar, please. Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. <coughs> is that him or his Hello? staff? Oh, my goodness. Hello? Oh, yeah, he has staff. Oh. Yeah, wow. Hello? 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 Uh, Hi. Sir, is that you? Yes, sir. This is me. Oh, it, going it, How's it, everybody doing? How's everybody doing tonight? How's everybody doing? Oh, well, El welcome Presidente. To the, welcome to the TMC for JMC sir, uh, show, sir. It's a pleasure to have and an you. An honor. An honor to have you, sir. Um, right now, we want everybody to know that um, you are, you're not the president yet. You're running for for the uh, the pre the uh, position, you know, yes, to be uh, president of uh, Freshville, Freshville, yeah. USA. Um, yes, it's USA, but it's not quite USA. You know what I'm saying? It might be an alternative place if uh, mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. don't go right here. So what I want yes. to do is give our platform to you so that you can let the people know why, one, they should elect you and exactly what... <laughs> Why Freshville should be a uh, a viable option for them. So, if you will, please, sir, uh, uh, present us your platform. Hey, you, uh, I'm gonna get you straight, bro. Straight to the vein. That's how I like to do it. Straight to the vein, uncut. Okay. So, 
my package when I get elected president, right? I'm guaranteeing my first thing I'm gonna do is this. My package is on is going like this as follows. Everyone gets all the poor people that is, all those people at the bottom. Okay. You okay. get ten thousand dollars for your first check. Then you get an additional two thousand a month, no bills for the whole year. Oh. What? Yo, that's, that is kind of fresh. Wow. Will something like that pass? Do we have that kind of budget? Do you? Yeah, yeah. That is a good question. Uh, uh, Do we have sorry. that type of budget? We print the money, man. We make this money. This is our money. Listen, we got the money. We got the. We printing the bread. You got the bag. I'm talking about. We got that bag. You got I'm that bag. About, Go yard bags, full of them. <laughs> we ain't playing over here. <laughs> and not only that, not only that, thousand dollars a month food stamps. And that's only for the poor people. That's for the poor middle class. Poor wow. Middle class. Okay. Can't okay. Can't forget, but what about what about the the uh, what do they call the uh, hater 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 crats? You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh the head crest? Oh, yeah, see, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a even going to hook them up. They get a 0.1%. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't, you know, we can't leave the haters out. You know, they got to get fresh, too, so we're going to get them a 0.1%. They got to work with that, though. But They got to work with that 0.1%, though. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we can't get a hater too much. You can't get a hater too much. You just got to get a hater too much. <laughs> then, and, all, and, and then, and I also, weed is legal. You weed can grow legal. it. Okay. You can grow. You can have. You can have ten pounds on you. It ain't no problem. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. daddy, we gonna ask you. We gonna ask you one thing: Is it that gas or is that air pack? If it's that air pack, you might go to jail. <laughs> we ain't playing that bullshit over here in Freshville. We don't play that bullshit. You gotta have that good shit. If you with that bullshit, you got that that. Well, how we used to say back in the day, we used to call that backyard boogie. Back you got that backyard boogie. boogie. <laughs> You gonna have, you gonna do you doing the two to five? <laughs> that's a crime. That's a crime. Yes, that's a crime. All right, so wow. So lately, lately, sir, you know the oh, the, I forgot. Mm -hmm. No, go I ahead. forgot. I forgot. I also, you know, I smoke a lot. Hold on, matter of fact, hold on. Let me get that to my life. <laughs> Damn it! Where the hell is my blunt lighter at? What? what? <laughs> Hey man, what you get paid for? Don't you get paid to light blunts? Come on, I like this motherfucker, man. Stop playing, man. Thank you. Yeah, man, you almost got fired, man. <laughs> you get paid to light. I, see, I got. I, I try to make everybody happy. You know what I'm saying? You gotta got have your staff right. I got a blunt roller. I got a blunt lighter. You know what I'm saying? So you are. So you are. Blunt. So your job report is pretty positive. Then you 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 are creating mm -hmm. jobs. I'm creating all type of jobs, man. <laughs> Somebody got to break the weed down. Somebody got to roll the weed up. Somebody got to light the weed. Somebody got to break. Somebody got to break the blunts of that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> everybody eats over here. Everybody eats. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just so obviously we we're still going through this pandemic here, and COVID has hit every place pretty pretty hard. How has COVID mm -hmm. affected Freshville and? What is your plan moving forward to, you know... Oh, see, we good. we good over here. We we have zero COVID over here. You know why? <laughs> so we keep it fresh. We keep our hands clean. You know what I'm saying? We use our sanitizer. We don't play. Disinfected. Everybody got lights off. I had... Listen. I bought two truckloads. Right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, 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 brought in a, I brought in two scientists. Okay. Okay. And I had them make... Not it's not it's not called lights it's, it's not lights all no more. It's called fresh all. Fresh all, fresh okay, all, all right. Wow. Fresh all, you know what I'm saying? Because it's fresh and it's for all of us. It's for all of wow. us. Okay, okay. So no cases, COVID. You got that handled down. So you guys didn't have to lock down then. Lock down. We just had a barbecue today. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right. man, man, the first lady, the first lady I had the, uh, the team out here, man, cooking. See, we don't eat pork too. That's another thing in Fresville. No pork. No pork. No pork okay. allowed in Fresville. Okay, right. okay. So we eat healthy. We just had the we had the seafood joint today. Tomorrow we are gonna have uh we gonna have you know we gotta we gotta do for the vegans too. So we gonna have the vegan joint tomorrow. You know what I'm oh. saying? Everybody eats. Like I said, everybody eats. Everybody eats. That's very equal of you. So so what is your your 
your foreign policy uh, when it comes to Freshville in terms of like dealing with, um, you know, your neighbors and and dealing with uh, immigration and things like that? Because obviously you might have a lot of people coming from uh, just the mainland America with the way things yes, are sir, going. We do. We do. See, see what, what we do is this. We help them. See, we, the saying in Freshville is, you come in looking like a worker, but you leave looking like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, that, that's, that's very, very... That's very odd. That's top. And, and, and I like that. So so, yes. so you guys have open borders and, and, and things like that? Or is there any talk of building any walls? Like, you know... Oh, no, we, we, ain't, we ain't building no walls. We got guns. We got guns over here. <laughs> so you come over, you come over here with the wrong temperature. You know what I'm saying? We, you know. Well, I got, I got a team. I can see. I wasn't supposed to tell nobody this, but I'm gonna let you all in. It's hot off the presses. <laughs> I got a team of scientists, right? Uh -huh. So when I become president, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna release the cure for the COVID. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. That all might right. well, win I'm you sure, the presidency. I'm sure your constituents are very happy to know that. And uh, so wow. the election is in a month, and um, by that time, I think we'll be at episode. We're at episode one hundred and nine right now. We'll be at episode one hundred and twelve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Which I think is pretty okay. dope. So okay, okay, so okay. By, by episode one hundred and twelve, this is one hundred and twelve. I'm gonna have room one hundred and twelve sing. Oh, okay. oh, you're gonna have them perform? Okay, we're gonna be looking forward. My inauguration. We're gonna oh, be looking that's forward the... to that. So, yeah, but. At a, on we, episode we pounds of weed. on episode one eleven, we're going to ha schedule yeah, a debate. We're gonna have hundred pounds. Everybody get high. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have wax. We're gonna have days. Whatever we need. we got it. We got edibles. We got all that. <laughs> wow, it sounds like a magical place. So, really but does. are you ready for the debates on episode one eleven? Uh, on episode uh, yeah, uh, one eleven because. Uh, because uh yeah there's going to be a debate we're going to have oh, his opponent that's right. you know um uh who is a proxy for Trump uh running for the heretocrats you know what I'm saying okay. you know against you know it's not an unopposed uh, election here you know he does have an opponent how do you feel about your opponent um any any thoughts about him I would like to tell him to get ready cuz I do this like I do it for TV <laughs> you need to be prepared. You know, you need to be prepared. First of all, if he ain't fresh, I don't even know why he even trying to even come. <laughs> even come to the debate, you ain't fresh. You know what I'm saying? And make sure, make sure he's ten feet. We won't do six feet. He he got to be ten feet away from me because you know, I don't want to reach him to get on me and then I infect some of my, my yeah, constituents. I, 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 I hear whackness is contagious. It is very contagious. Well, that is very, very considerate contagious. of you towards your people. Yes. I got to look out for the people because I'm a man yes. of the people. Yes. You're a man of the people. It and, sounds like And it. protect yourself from whackness. We cannot let yep. whackness invade Freshville. Oh, 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 yeah. I forgot. I, 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 did, I did I say the part about the, uh, about the debt relief program? No. No, no you did not. It gets oh, better. Oh, yeah, it gets way better. I got a debt relief program on credit cards and school. What? Oh. Oh. And it's going to be free school, free college. So you are pro education in, in Freshville. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The children are our future. The children are our future. Okay. So I, I have a question. So can you print unlimited amount of money? I don't know if you I wasn't supposed to say this, but, you know. Right now we got like, uh, we just made this. We just we, we didn't even know this was a number. We we had to look this shit up. I'm telling you, we had to look this shit up. So we have we ready to print six tuple million. Six, six tuple. Six tuple yeah. billion. I have Remember, never at, even heard of that. Trillion, it's trillion at the trillion is quadrillion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And after that. And then you get two steps after that, you get the six tuple. Oh, six tuple! Wow, six tuple yeah. billion. Wow, so yeah. you are able to raise our federal income by printing so more money. So wow. who who is actually on the the highest bill? Like, uh, where here in America we have, I guess, the Benjamin 
Uh, mm-hmm. What What do you guys have there in Freshville? Oh, we got we have we have the Obama hundred thousand dollar bill. Oh, oh wow! Right. I right. I could right. see how that's that's, right. that's oh, crazy. Ambassador Obama. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, yeah, I, that's important. That, that I don't definitely know is important. Why hasn't made it here yet? Any 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 since Harriet Tubman didn't make it on the twenty here, you think there's any chance that she or Dr. King or uh, oh, maybe wait. Malcolm X? Oh, see, see, it's like this. See, I, I that was the I, you, you you interrupted me. I ain't going to order. So order. Okay. See, it's Obama with the hundred thousand, right? Uh huh. And then we got then we got. We got Harriet at the two fifty, right? Okay. Okay. Then we got half a mil. We got Malcolm X at the half a mil. Oh wow! Oh, then so so a million dollar is like your dollar bill. Yes, you can have a million dollar bill. Wow, what a, you have quite an exchange rate to uh, <laughs> yes, yes, America yes, to yes. the U.S. So the seven fifty, that's Doctor King. Okay. Wow. And. And you know who's on the million dollar bill? Who's that? Black Jesus. Black what? Jesus. Okay, okay. There is such a thing? Oh. Yeah, yeah. It says it in the Bible. His skin was copper in hair like wool. Who is that? If that ain't a nigga. And if you're going to put anybody on your top bill, it should be Black Jesus. Yes, sir. Black it Jesus. should be Black Jesus. I just don't uh-huh. see how it would work any other way. Who's on your penny? We don't have pennies. <laughs> 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 that's that's that, that's that's hate the real USA. Like, yeah. you know, that's bills. We just got hundreds and up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because that was one of the platforms for your opponent. You know, uh, leader of the haters. You know, he was like they wanted to bring back the penny. They mm-hmm. like that's yeah, why they no, were no, protesting no. in the streets over the penny. We want our penny, and our we hate want our no. penny. Our hate pennies. What yeah, I hate pennies. Hate pennies. <laughs> no. So you no. getting rid of you got rid of the penny and the penny. The quarter, the dimes. You don't need anything food, loose. Dollars, five dollar, ten dollar, twenty dollars, so fifty dollars. Can you that. even can you even buy a dime of weed? A dime of weed in Freshville is an ounce. I'm just oh, okay. saying. Okay. Okay. All right. Wow, this is better than Canada. This is way better than Canada. You get a whole zip for you get a whole zip over there. So what are you gonna do? If, great. So what are you gonna do if Trump is elected, reelected here, and he's he's successful at building this wall and on the border of Freshville, he decides he's going to build a wall on, you know, and he's going to make Freshville pay for it. Yeah. He's going to make Freshville pay for it. Mm-hmm. Are you guys prepared to pay for the wall? Oh no, I got, I got to get my blood lighter again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they just asked me, they just asked me, this motherfucking crazy ass guy. Oh, Asian. Wait, what do you call him again? What you call him? Uh, President Trump. Well, Trump. Uh, no, we don't, we don't call him that over here. We call, oh, Agent Orange. Yeah, that's what we call him. Agent, <laughs> Agent Orange. Agent Orange. <laughs> yeah, Agent Orange. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because he, see, he, he's really an undercover agent for Hayesville. Oh, oh, yeah, I believe so as well. I believe so as well. Yeah, I, believe, I guess I could see yeah. that. I, I, I think there's deep-rooted ties between he and Hayesville. And, yeah. you know, I believe they're trying see, to... See, he, tried to blind, he tried to blind my folks. He tried to blind my people. With some twelve hundred dollar stimulus little package, I told him don't even worry about that, nigga. You can't afford that. Don't even worry about that. <laughs> he, he gave he gave the, the people with the count, the rich people. They gave them what they gave him five hundred. How would you say five hundred million? Yeah, five hundred million. Yeah, he gave them five hundred million. So, so you do support um, small businesses in Freshville? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, what about? I mean, right now, once again, in America, there's a lot of things going on. What are what are your opinion? What would you like to say to the American people, uh, uh, Sir uh, Hefe uh, Freshkabar? Uh, if you had to say anything to the American people right now, maybe you know, to give us hope or anything to see how we can get through this. What would be your message to the American people going through what they're going through right now with the police brutality, with the killings, with you know, just all that? You know what I'm saying? Uh, here, I'm going to just really give you the floor. And just let you close it out there with with your thoughts uh, to the American people, sir. Yeah, my thoughts are the hold on. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts are that is this, man. That's some bullshit what they did today. You see what they did to that man? And then he had the nerve to do the Colin fucking Kaepernick motherfucking deal on this man. See, in Freshville, we don't have that type of stuff like that. There's no racism in Freshville. Mm-hmm. Shit, my vice president white. 
<laughs> he's a good guy. Yeah, he's fucking great. <laughs> Ain't that right, Bill? Bill. I'm trying to tell you. Everybody eats in fresh milk. This is crazy. No, no brutality. We have no. We have a zero crime rate. Zero. Impressive. Everybody has something zero to give. Crime rate. You know why we have a zero crime rate? Because everybody eats. Everybody eats. Mm -hmm. Everybody eats. That will solve everything if everybody eats. Everybody eats. If everybody eats, there's no problem. There's no hate. Everybody eats. And it's much better when everybody eats, but some people don't eat because other people have to break their backs for them to eat. Yeah. Here... Uh, there's been a lot of food that's been stolen. <laughs> there's been a lot of forced labor that so that somebody else could eat. You know what I'm saying? You didn't get to yeah, eat because yeah, you had yeah. to work it. And that's yeah. another thing. You know what the minimum wage is at Freshville? What's that, sir? 25 an hour. Wow. That's, that's, that's oh, dope. It's incredible. I, I, now yeah. I see how people can uh, afford those Obamas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it you know, just sounds absolutely magical. You know, and all about those black Jesuses, yo. I'm talking about I'm this is crazy. Oh, tax return in Fresh Bill? Oh my gosh. You get a hundred thousand back in your taxes. What? Okay. You, a, you you could work the half a month. You still get a hundred thousand. If wow. you work the, if you if you work the whole year, or you get half of M. So oh. just for being a resident of Freshville. Well on your taxes, yes. Well That's amazing. Well, amazing. Freshville definitely sounds like a place that we want to go to at least to visit. Uh, yes. I'm working on getting my passport right so that I can come. Yes, it's hard um, to get a visa into Freshville. Well, yeah. Well, do you think that maybe you could pull some strings, maybe talk to your Congress or something yes. there mm -hmm. and get us, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, quick I'm a, I'm a, see, I, we tried to keep it under the wraps, but see, I'm going to just let it out there. See, what the people don't know is, see, me and... Uh, my constituents, we put something together, you know, since we, uh, I did the homework and we're, we're related. I come to find out we're related. So, uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, I get to come in on a family visa. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Well, as, as awesome it works out so well. That I'm, I'm, and you get to bring, and you get to bring 10 people with you. What? Oh, that's dope. City. What? what a great place. You are such a generous, generous we, leader. I got five black cards. You know, we have black cards. Ready when y'all touch down. Oh. That's dope. Well, I can't wait to get to come there and, and meet the family, sir. Um, Buddy. Once again, it's been a pleasure. And my platform Absolutely. is available to you anytime you need to speak. Get the word out to your constituents. Anytime. Uh, breaking news or not. Um, I hope to have you on. But definitely for one eleven, there is going to be a debate. So that's at least two weeks from now. So mm -hmm. I, I hope you're prepared, sir, because... Uh, the world needs for you to win this election. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. See, what they don't know, what they don't know, we already won. Yes, we did, sir. Yes, yes we sir. already won. And with that, we we're going to go out to break. You know why we already won? Because we got black Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>
um, when you're part of like a studio audience and they yeah. cut to commercial and they'll you know in between like in between intermissions or whatever the breaks that yeah. they let you get up they'll they'll play something like this. Well, the cool thing about you know being stuck in well it's kind of cool and not kind of cool is one there's so much to watch but two you kind of go through it all the time yeah so like in 2020 you think anybody have any dumb tvs anymore oh yeah i think so you think you oh do? yeah 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 i do i do um i mean i know that older people probably have old tvs well we have roku tv smart tvs yeah but um we have smart tvs with, yeah. that came with roku yeah they have but, the roku system built in you know we have a dumb tv um mm -hmm. in our conference room okay. um at the office and uh it's a large one it's probably like a 55 inch mm -hmm. and like i said it's a dumb tv it's a flat screen okay so um and it's a great tv we went out and bought a roku stick for it oh, okay and it is so cool because you know our tvs is being it the fire stick uh, it's well, fire. It's not the Fire Stick. It's okay. the Roku Stick. Oh, okay. It's made by Roku. Okay, it, it might be like the Express or something. Like mm -hmm. that. And it's just this. It's kind of like a kind of like a Chrome, but it comes with a remote. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty dope. You oh, know, okay. there's two different kinds. Yeah, it's the, the Roku Express HD. We yep. have it on <laughs> t 4 chain That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> In hidden closet. Yep. Yeah. And it's like super dope. Like it turns your dumb TV mm -hmm. into a smart TV. And I guess the difference. What's the difference between that and the Fire Stick, though? I don't use a fire stick, so we yeah. have Roku's. All our TVs are Roku's. Hmm. You know, I love Roku's. I won't buy a TV without Roku. Well, either way, guys, go to uh, TMC for JMC .com, Hidden Closet. Yep. And uh, we have them available. You will not be disappointed. And uh, let us know what's the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those of you with fire sticks. <laughs> yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy. We are recording. Yeah, buddy, buddy. What up, what up, what up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you cut I'm that off pretty fast. Getting, trying to get the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. JFC on the sound effects, y'all. <laughs> so, anyway, welcome back to the TMC for JMC show. Um, we got something special for you guys. We got uh, actually not just a regular call in, it's not a rapper. <laughs> it's not, you know, a homie. It's not somebody who just happened to call me while we're doing the show. It's an actual person. Um, who knows some things. Who knows some things, who has a job, you know, yeah. <laughs> and is a business dude and, and things like that. And uh, um, you know this person uh, personally? Yeah. Yep. I keep saying word person too much. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Yeah. You know, dude works. You know, person personally, 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 personally. Anyway, so... <laughs> Um, you know, so you want to introduce uh, uh, who's on the phone right now? Yep, we have <laughs> Jason to the A more in on the phone. <laughs> hey, Jason, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Jason? Oh, I can hear you now. Yeah, uh, I, all I, I can I uh, th I cannot live up to the uh, someone that knows things. I yeah. definitely can't live up to that, but I, <laughs> no, we won't. You know, I mean, it's it's a little touch and go here for all of us, in far as on the things we know. I think, I think we all on the fly. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, so Jason to the A more, and what was what's the uh, the those are your initials? Jason A. Morton is his name. He oh, goes okay. by. What do you yep. do? You prefer Jason or Jay? What do you? What do people? Uh, yeah, uh, Jason. I mean, when, when I was growing up, Jay sometimes, but yeah, the initials are Jam. So yep. that's uh, you know, Jam. That's, that's right. where that com that's comes from. And his middle oh, name jam. is Austin. Oh, Mike Taylor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, which is our son's middle name too, oh, okay. which is pretty cool. Jam. <laughs> and Jason okay. is an attorney. Um, in Virginia and here. Did it jam for me, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> he slid through the bar. <laughs> so, so, growing up, did you have any nicknames? Obviously, they didn't call you Jam. You know, uh, that's a good question. Um, not really. I guess I, was, I really didn't have any. I mean, <laughs> as, in, as, in, as interesting as that is, I had... No nicknames. Jamo. So, all right, Jamo. That was, but that was more of a college nickname. Jamo. That's how create. That's how creative <laughs> friends were. They just combined J and. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I get Jamo. All right, all right. Uh, I'm not gonna like, say Jamo. Like your own couple. Yeah, but uh, 
All right, so I mean, coming. There, up I, and, I, uh, Thomas, uh-huh. Thomas, I'm going to interrupt you. There was a time, and now it's starting to all come back to me because my memory is so bad, which <laughs> Jackie can tell you is true. But uh, and I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. So there was a period of time in college <laughs> where my nickname was Drunk Twenty Four, and that's true because I drank a lot in college. <laughs> Tour, tour 24 or something like that. I don't remember what it was. Oh, okay. That was a long time ago. What kind that was of, a long time ago. What kind of student were you? Were you a party guy? Were you, uh, were you good with the books? Uh, yeah, both. I guess I just kind of snuck through on uh, on all of those things. But, I, you know, I definitely had a good time in school. There's no doubt about that. I got I got much more serious about it after. It took me a little time to grow up, right? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I did all right. But you weren't a nerd? No, I definitely wasn't a nerd. I wasn't trying to be. <laughs> I guess you can't be a nerd with the name J Mo and Drunk Twenty Four. <laughs> where did you go? There you to, go. That's right. Where did you go to high school? Oh, look, the phones are in. What's that? <laughs> where did you go to high school? I went to uh, I went to O'Neill. Where's Over that? there, the, uh, it's in Moore County. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So you were you were a North Carolina resident. You grew up. Uh, I was. Yeah, I grew. I, I was born and raised in North Carolina. Oh. Uh, went to school in Ohio. Uh, okay. And then got out of Ohio as fast as I could. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's don't write any letters. No, I'm kidding. But the uh, it, was, <laughs> it was too cold for me in Ohio. But yeah, I went to school in Ohio, and of course moved out to DC. What about what, about four or five years ago? In '93, where were you? Ninety three, I uh, was in North Carolina. Oh, okay. So we was in yeah. North Carolina around the same time then. North County, Ho- uh, North County, Hope County. Yep. So who knew? Exactly. You guys were really you've been there that long? Um, no, no, no. I, no. Well, I uh, came down here as a kid, and then I moved down here with the school. So I went to um, elementary, uh, middle school, junior high, high school, and then I went to college at Greensboro. So. So yeah, oh, I yeah. Know uh, from I don't know eighty something to ninety eight, I was in North Carolina. Oh wow! Okay, and now yeah. I'm back. Yeah. Now I know, I know your mom, Joanne, and she's <laughs> from New York somewhere. She's from Jamaica, Queens. She, she's uh-huh. from Queens. Joanne is spunky, very spunky. She's yeah. she is. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's all about like four nine, right? That's as high as she gets. Four and oh, yes, that's God. right. But intimidating as hell. <laughs> she will tell she you what is, is on yeah, her mind. She is a whip. She is. I mean, she's seventy six, and she's sharp as they come. Oh yeah, you know? and talks, man. Now I know where you get oh. it from. So, <laughs> so get into a little bit about uh, what you do. Um, you're a lawyer, and. I am. Um, I, a tax attorney? That's right. Uh, so what exactly yeah. is a tax attorney? I know, this could be like the most boring call-in you've ever had. Your ratings just dropped. Like, <laughs> you don't got to okay. spice it up. Just, you know, okay. it, 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 to, if you're talking to a five-year-old. Uh, all, right, all right. No, I mean, t- so... There are, a lot, there are lots of different things tax attorneys can do, right? I mean, I I used to prepare a lot of returns when I was early in my career. That's what every tax attorney does, prepare returns. But the reason I say that is because if you go to a damn dinner party or something and your wife, I would always tell my wife, don't tell people what I do. You know, please, whatever. Just make just make shit up. Don't tell them what I do, right? Um, because I, it's because, yeah, because somebody's going to come up to me and say, hey, can I talk to you? Listen, my cousin's got this problem. It's small business. They got she got a Schedule C, and she got you know, and doesn't know how to put this earned income credit on her tax return. I'm like I have no clue, you know what okay. I mean? Because I haven't done anything. Like, so, but uh, mainly I do tax defense work, tax litigation. So, okay, if basically if the IRS is coming after you and you need to defend yourself, so you're uh, like, oh, you're okay. Com- so in a way, you're kind of like the the. Uh, Robert Shapiro of tax attorneys. <laughs> there you go. That's what I, I like to say. I, I would prefer Johnny to Cochran. say that than. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Of course. But I would rather say that than, than Matlock. I'd rather be Johnny Cochran than Matlock. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah wow, Matlock. But, uh, yeah, no, man. Matlock. So, Matlock was, uh, all right. So, okay. So that sounds. I mean, it sounds glamorous, but you know, I happen to know that it isn't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's, there's only actually, there's only this is a fact. There's only one uh, cool movie ever made about a tax attorney, and that is The Firm. Okay. You remember that movie? Yeah, I've seen The it. Firm. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. That was, he was a tax attorney. He was helping guys like put money through the Caymans. And that was a cool. That was a cool movie, but yeah, it's the but, only one I ever made. It's, which was going to be my next question? Is that like, like when you're what's the <laughs> <laughs> what's the big fish when you're a tax attorney? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you, you had a big fish, or, <laughs> or, or yeah. is it, the client or client? opportunity or <laughs> oh yeah that's a good question <clears throat> that's a good question um i don't know i mean i think i think criminal cases you know if you get to the criminal level right uh-huh. there's been some there's been some 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 major shit going on right i mean if you get to that level you've been doing a lot of a lot of bad stuff for the most part so mm. um so those cases are really interesting um and big clients i mean yeah I mean, we've done i've done offshore work with alex i mean you know my partner i mean he's we've done that kind of stuff but it that's really not people think they, they hear offshore and they automatically think you know a bunch of crooks <laughs> and all sort of kind of stuff that's not true there are lots oh, okay. of le- other there are lots of other legal reasons to do do things in in, in different in different jurisdictions but um so you have, have you had somebody you know, with so you like have, you haven't had to defend your your, yeah. your tax scar face like Wesley Snipes, did you defend Wesley Snipes? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> Wesley Snipes. That's right. Uh, that was a good case, dude. I read it. Um, the um, uh, no, I mean, I've had yeah, my, I've had my version of Scarfaces, <laughs> but uh, but I've never, and I've defended drug cases. Uh, they're usually usually through North Carolina. Those are actually pretty interesting cases. Drugs, drugs um, and taxes. Or just drugs. Oh, yeah, well, in North Carolina has this little, uh, it's called, you know, yes. I don't know what they call it now, but it's substance, uh, substance abuse uh, tax or something. So wow. they'll yeah. tax you, they'll tax you, they'll tax you sales tax on the amount of uh, the quantity of whatever you were it's moving. That yeah. one I time. just read about yeah. this recently. Information yeah. from the TMC yeah. for JFC show. Absolutely. You get caught, you pay taxes anyway. <laughs> exactly. That's it. So I had, a, I had a case one time where, a client had gotten caught. I don't remember all the details, but let's say had gotten he had gotten busted with a hundred pounds of marijuana, whatever wow. it was, right? Yeah. So what they do is they will take your weight, right, and uh-huh. then they will calculate, you know, what 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 does this normally go for? Okay, whatever it is. I mean, I don't <laughs> wow, know, I wonder what I, wow what they have. So, so, they, so they had a couple. They had like twenty G's, maybe wow. a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so what, they'll, what they'll do? <laughs> yeah. What they'll do is they'll say you're usually selling half ounces or whatever, and those mm-hmm. go for whatever it is, two hundred dollars. I don't know the numbers, but mm-hmm. two hundred dollars. And then they'll it, they act like you're selling a product in the marketplace, so they'll exactly. they will uh, assess you essentially sales tax on that product. <laughs> so they basically broke it down, flipped it, and and made some money. And, yeah, they basically did what you were going to do, but they say, <laughs> hey, we're going to give you the tax, and then. It's yeah. not like you're getting the drugs right, back. You're just <laughs> selling weed tax free. Yeah. I mean, was, so I've defended quite a few of these, and what happens is you do your time, mm-hmm. and then you get out, and you're like, go see your girl, whatever the first thing you want to do when you get out, right? <laughs> and then next thing you know is the Department of Revenue hands you a notice that says, congratulations, you owe us you know, $50,000. Oh, so, man. Yeah. So, I, I get and the, this was that. Good. Well, I was going to say, I get the basis behind their claim, although I feel it's double dipping as hell. Because now you're taxing a crime. Like, are crimes taxable now? Like, you know, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, if I'm not supposed to do it, how do you tax it? And if you can tax it, then you should allow me to do it. But that's totally different, you know, whatever. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's been challenged. Uh, and, it survived yeah. here, but other places have challenged it, you know, constitutionality grounds, right? You're getting yeah. sort of like double punishment, right? Aren't yeah, exactly. you getting like, punished twice kind of thing? Um, North Carolina has held firm with it, but... In that case, that 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 case was my, uh, and and, and I mean, my, that case was my drug dealers go on vacation case. Okay, so that so what? <laughs> so that case, and I was successful with this case. But one of my defenses was so what they did was they broke it down and said, listen, he's normally selling this much over this period of time, and it's going for this, and they calculated it out right over this mm-hmm. period of time. Mm-hmm. And every, you know, so they were figuring out he was on average, on average or whatever, he was selling this much per day, right? Okay. Which I have a problem yeah, with that because I said, him, listen, I mean, had him working. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. The best That's what I said. I, yeah, I said, come on, drug dealers are on vacation too. How do you know he was selling this every day? You know what I mean? Like, every day? Really? I mean, come on, my guy <laughs> probably, yeah, I mean, he got a baby mama. A he got a girlfriend. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, and you know what? I mean, I was able to get him a pretty good deal, but that that was one of my main points was you can't just assume the guy's doing the yeah. same volume every day, 365 days a right. year. Yeah, you know? he can't be the right. best drug dealer in the world. In fact, Fiends go right. on vacation as well. Maybe he's Catholic. He takes <laughs> a, right. maybe he's Catholic and he takes Sundays off. Or yeah, that's that's right. Right. you know, Plus, they didn't, they didn't calculate for the competition that's out there. So you that's could be like, too, yeah. you could be like, yeah, he's selling two half ounces a day, but it was like, yeah, but he lives on a block where there's like nine drug dealers. It's very competitive. It's yeah, very competitive. Yeah, absolutely. And some days he don't sell nine mm-hmm. to uh, half ounces. That's right. Here's another here's another tip for the listeners. <laughs> if, you, if you get into that situation, <laughs> if you get into that situation, there's another really important thing because it is a lot of, you know, it's based on weight, right? I mean, how much, and they do, that's how they, that's how they base all their calculations on how much it would sell for and stuff. Yeah. But here's the thing. When, when they seize it, not all of that is illegal, right? Mm. It's like stems uh-huh. and whatever. Right. I mean, exactly. You, you, exactly. Yeah. It, you're right. So, so what they what they used to like, they don't know how they do it now, but they would just take all the shit, throw it on a on a scale, and be like, "Oh, your guy's got this much, right?" Well, not 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 that much illegal stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. So, yeah. So the weight became a big source of contention. So the too. So the stems cool. are not illegal. I don't remember. Yeah. It. Uh, I, I mean, I haven't. Yeah. Um, that I haven't, could be a you know, nice loophole. That college was a long time ago. But <laughs> yeah. the, uh, <laughs> Plus, hey, there's, there's, but, and there's, some, happens there's some like, dust on that. Uh, there's some dirt in there. And it's, you know, like, yeah, that's it was right. my there's, pocket. There's light on there. <laughs> right. And actually, when you're, and I haven't looked at it, probably shouldn't even be talking about it. Because right? I haven't looked at the statue in so long. But there are, it spells it out in the statute what can be part of the weight and what can't. Oh, okay. But, but you know. Yeah, the guys out there, the whoever the, the cops are out there doing, that, I mean, they're just going to throw it all in there, and you know, and I don't know. That's been my that was my experience with my case is that things weren't so much on the up and up. But the uh, but anyway, we got we got, we ended up ended up getting okay. a pretty good little. All right, awesome. so that that that's some great insight. Um, definitely uh, needed uh, right now in terms of uh, just. You know, I'm not here out here promoting drug dealing or anything like that. But, <laughs> but you know, with the situation that's been going on with COVID and things like that, I'm sure people have been tr- been turning to other means to uh, su- support their families and yeah, you know, things like that. So, outside of that, uh, you also in the military? Uh, I am. I'm in a reserve component, uh, Army National Guard. I just got off. What active duty 2018? I've been in it a little over 10 years, but I was on. I got called up to do a tour, so I got off. Uh, I got off that tour. And, and uh, are you an team. attorney in the military? I am. I'm a JAG. I'm a JAG. I'm a JAG. Like so, what is that? And it's exact. It's a, it's exactly like the TV show where you fly like F-14s. You know, <laughs> 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 that, thing, that thing is so ridiculous. Anyway, right, well. <laughs> so what exactly does it stand for? Well, you you can do it. Just it depends, right? That's a great lawyer answer. It depends. But the I'm assigned, thank God, to TDS, which is Trial Defense Services. So I I, I defend soldiers who are in trouble. They're trying to kick out or whatever the situation is. So, and that's good for me because I'm a defense attorney at heart. But what, you know, does, I was, uh, what does JAG itself stand for? Oh, uh, Judge Advocate General. That sounds like that's more... It does, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, more than what it really is. Yeah, that sounds like it's more... <laughs> more than for, a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, like like you more like, hey, I'm really here to set you up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm his friend, not your friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah J- Judge Advocate General Corps. Yeah, I'm representing is, the military, uh, not you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Uh, okay, but uh, but ultimately, yeah. you're a judge for a uh, for a soldier, and and he prob did he do something in the military sense, or did he yes. do something so, in a civilian sense? Well, civilian cases can bleed over into into the military, but okay. ju- but more times than not, yeah, the guy, you know, he popped hot on the drug test. Or I've had quite a few, unfortunately, sexual assault cases yeah. you know, that I've handled over the last few years, um, and uh, so I, you know, I'm defense counsel for for those cases. Okay. Um, and you know, it, normally they're trying to. By the time they get to me, I mean they're trying to to discharge the guy. Oh, you know? okay. So um, is that all you're really it, stopping? Just him getting kicked out, or are you stopping him getting locked up? 
the, the uh, so uh, well, I mean, we've got a we have a court martial going on right now, which is our criminal equivalent, right? Oh, okay. um, and so you can be prosecuted criminally inside the military, and sometimes that'll happen where the uh, where the uh, civil authorities don't want to take action, right? The military mm-hmm. says, "Well, we will," you know, and mm-hmm. um, so you can get wound up. In, in in a place you don't want to. Most of my cases are discharge cases. North Carolina, uh-huh. in particular, doesn't prosecute a lot in court martials. We have one going on right now that I'm helping out uh, another JAG with. Uh, but most of them are, you know, we want you, we're trying to kick you out. And if it's a young kid, I don't know, some of them don't really care too much. Yeah. They just don't, you know, they just want an honorable discharge or they don't, they don't want a dishonorable. Yeah. Uh, but what really, the, the kids that get nasty are the ones where, you know, the cat's been in, 16 years right he's had like three deployments and he went through a tough time you can tell him a defense story he went through a tough time <laughs> in his life and you know what i mean he took some oxycontin or whatever I, you know what i mean like, but, but he, but he just to let loose yeah, yeah, but, you know. but you know he, he, he pops hot and all of a sudden you know we forget about three tours to iraq exactly you know what yeah. I mean? I, okay so i, I mean I have, I have a major problem with that yeah I, yeah. I, you know what i have a major problem with that too have you had your you can't handle the truth case <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if I had that case, no, you I can't wish I, I love that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. Did you do that in court? I, <laughs> like, yeah. You don't or get you dramatic in court, court, right? <laughs> yeah, I get animated. <laughs> you want that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a emotion. I'm a hard on my sleeve kind of guy, so, so it's hard for me not to. But <laughs> so, being that you know you're a military guy. You're a lawyer and things like that. Uh, how do you feel seeing your, you know, your fellow brothers out there being deployed to, to, to stop protests and to, to, to kind of be? I'm now I'm speaking for myself and when I ask this question. Sure. So if it's loaded, uh, feel free to answer however you like. But to be um, used as uh, just an totalitarian arm you know what i'm saying especially with what's going on in dc uh how do you right. feel about seeing your, your brothers having to follow or orders that they may or may not you know what i mean agree with yeah uh a good question and uh and you're talking about the national guard being deployed yes and and to, okay sure um well as far as how do i feel about my brothers doing that um you know, when you sign up, listen, I mean, you know, there is the Uncle Sam, you know, stamped his stamp on the back of your tail, you know, what I mean, <laughs> in a sense. So you, you only have your feelings that come into it are, are sort of no one really cares, <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with you. I mean, it, you know, I mean, you know, if you have an assignment, is it your duty? This is what you signed up for, you got to go do it. Now, can you, does that mean, you know, you have a choice? I mean, you could say, no, I don't want to do it, you know, and, and there are, there are ways to get out of the military. But then you have on, to be defended by a guy like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, on religious grounds or, you know, or things like that. I mean, if okay. it was, a, but, but, you know, so I think, how, I, I feel like the guys that are having to go do it, you know, that's your job, right? right? And, you mm-hmm. know, if, and, and, if, and if you don't like that job, I mean, you signed up for it, you know what the hell you're signing Duty up for. Duty first, I understand. Then try, then try to have, then try to find your way out. But personally, um, you know, I I am a I, I advocate. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I believe in the Constitution. I believe in the right to protest. No mm-hmm. doubt about it. And uh, and there is grounds. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I, you know, but based on what happened. Um, and uh, now I also think you have to balance that with safety, right? Indeed. I mean, in a, in a sense of if there if there's inciting violence going on and that kind of stuff, then yeah, sometimes I mean that that. Sometimes you need to balance that with the safety of other people, um, but yeah, that's that's always a tough call to make. But I, I definitely don't think we should uh, quell peaceful protests. I mean, that's how we've had the most radical change changes that we've had in our country. So those are those are all good things. Now, uh, know, I think good. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, if, if you're gonna, you know. Uh, no, I think I was done. Oh, okay. <laughs> Period. Uh, I think Period. <laughs> Mic drop. I was, yeah, I was winding it. I was winding into a rabbit hole. Couldn't get out of it. So, uh, well, <laughs> well, I don't want to get you talking too much because you still are act, um, in the the guard, and you know what I mean. You know, 
Um, I don't yeah, think exactly right. I, the I JAG know, officers yeah, so, are the last ones they'll call out. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I don't want somebody hear him on a TMC for JMC show and be like, hey, you spoke bad against the whatever. In fact, <laughs> what are the rules against that? I mean, I served in the Guard uh, for a few years, four years, but, you know, I was just a uh, uh, 71 Lima, you know. Um, you know what a 71 Lima is? No, I was getting ready to ask you. Uh, administrative specialist. What is your, what is the, uh, the... 27 Alpha. Well, ooh, 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 that ooh. sounds yeah, so grand. Oh, we in the alpha. You know, you know what's funny about you know what's funny about that when you said that seventy one Lima. Uh huh. So one of my biggest pet like peeves, and you, you know, I'm kind of limited. <laughs> I'm limit. I'm limited. What I can really say about the military, but one of my I'll say this one. It, it is our use of acronyms, right? Okay. I got a, I had a, I had a sentence one time that had I think it was, it was one sentence with five acronyms in it, right? I'm, I want <laughs> Because it was a higher ranking officer, so I couldn't spit back, you know, like, really? I mean, can we not just say, you know, so that everybody can understand this? But, that, but, but you know, and I know you remember this. That's what everybody does when they talk about their MOS, right? What do yeah. you do? Um, 71 Liam, I'm a 27 Alpha, I'm a 15, whatever. Mm. And you know what? 90% of it, I have no freaking clue yeah like, you, know what I mean? like, and you always <laughs> expect the other person to know like hey i'm a 71 lima okay motherfucker yeah. <laughs> i'm a leader you know, the funny part is i i the funny part is i bet 90 percent of the people who don't know act like they do know yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah me too or they just say what theirs are just so that they can change the subject yeah that's right because you don't you don't want to be that guy it's like man you don't know what a you know 55 you know whatever i mean you know you don't want to be that guy right but oh. nobody who could memorize all this i things? wonder how like, often is made up like yeah i'm a 64 charlie <laughs> you know 69 tango <laughs> or is there like a 24 pepe you know? <laughs> I, would, I would be yeah, i would be a 23 mj yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. oh yeah do they have is it always four letters or is there like a no, minimum three, but I, I just made that up but 23 oh. mj is what i would want to be yeah oh, exactly sweet. like you know or so you would have gotten me I, I don't know oh so so jordan is the goat as far as you're concerned Short as yeah, I might, try, you know what? I might try that one time. Just say it's a new MOS. You know what I mean? The twenty three MJ. Oh, you haven't heard of that? I said, no. so, <laughs> it's new. So, it's very twenty twenty. So Jordan is the goat to you. In yeah. <laughs> Jordan, uh, ready Jordan for takeoff. Twenty three MJ. <laughs> ready for takeoff. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so, are you a, a Michael Jordan fan? Oh man, again! Born and raised in North Carolina, he's a huge fan. Uh, that that new there's a new series out. Um, yeah. I've not watched the whole thing yet, but it's on Netflix, right? Yeah. Um, uh, oh, it is. I thought yeah. it was on ESPN. Oh, it's ESPN. You're right. I'm sorry. So that's how oh, that's how Netflix, up to speed I am on <laughs> watching yeah. things. But um, <laughs> but I've heard I have to watch it. I'm a huge Jordan fan. Yes, I'm the I'm the old guy that thinks the game was different back then and it was better. Yeah, but, I'm you know, I'm with I'm, you. I'm with you. So yeah. is he the yeah. goat in your opinion? The greatest of all time? Yes. Oh. Yep. Oh, wow. yeah. I mean, I, and, and, you know, listen, I don't, I gotta, don't want you to get letters when I go through my list. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know, cause I've got, I, you know, uh, of the contemporary guys, it's just hard for me to opine on, you know, I mean, you know, I've, Wilt and Russell and all those guys, I mean, you know, obviously, I, I, it's hard for me sometimes to say they they are here because I just don't feel like I have a, a, a good I don't have a good enough perspective I can to really give an opinion you know what I mean yeah. uh, so I, I'm just talking about the players I've seen but yeah it's Jordan and Kobe well I mean I me. think every sport has their situation their error that kind of doesn't count like that's almost like comparing New York City and. 1842 to New York City right. in 2014. You know, two different yeah, cities. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. So, in a way, the basketball league is like that, is going to be like that. Like, there could be a time, right? Like, they're starting the, I think it's called the BAL, which is the Basketball African League. So, there could be a oh, time that's, that's... where, 10 years from now, where they have the best players. And right. their Jordan eclipses our Jordan. And they're going to be speaking about it in terms that just don't relate to what we were doing here, you know, because all their players mm-hmm. might be on average freaking seven feet tall, you know? Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, right. they got seven feet tall point guards, you know? So when I yeah, get... Yeah, I think... I, 
I love basketball debates, though, by the way. But uh, I haven't watched it, and I, and I want to. Uh, but I agree with you on the different airs. You know, it's just hard to, it's hard to, to you know. And, and it, I mean, it's hard to make any kind of comparison. But with the, you know, with the Jordan air and today's air, um, with the, within a few rule changes, you know, you can make that comparison. And some of those rule changes were significant. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I mean, you know, I mean. So, so, yeah, when you start getting into the Wilt Chamberlains and the Bill Russells and all that, um, I think while basketball was the same sport, it was um, it, it was played closer to the way college was with some teams. And some guys, they just had that one dude that played like he was on the playground. Like, he was just right. – and you could say Wilt Chamberlain was that guy, you know. So, that's right. Um, so, yeah, um, it's, that's just the well, way I see is, it. But, are you, is, he your, is he your goat? Who, Jordan? Jordan, yeah. Oh, yeah, no question. No question. Okay, and yeah. then, right, yeah. then I would uh, follow it up with the the Kobe's and the LeBron's. But, uh, LeBron, yeah. But, you know, LeBron still got some. It, I don't know. The 6-0, and bro. 6-0, and it just does it for me. <laughs> you know, in the finals, the rings. <laughs> you oh, know? yeah. That's it. Well, that's what it's about, right? It's about, it's yeah. about winning. My, my, my favorite young player, even though this is blasphemy because I'm a Carolina guy, Carolina <laughs> fan, uh, Jason Tatum, I, I like his game a lot, okay. and and um, and and because he yoked over LeBron in the finals last year, <laughs> <laughs> and I love. I mean, you know, um, um, how can you not be? A, you can't be a basketball fan and not like LeBron's game. But if, you know, with Jordan, you didn't even ask me this question, so I'm sorry. Mm, yeah. Jackie knows that I'll just talk like my, you know, I'll do your thing, on, bro. But uh, but uh, for me, the Jordans and the Kobe's, it was really about. You know, it was about st- and stepping on people's throats, honestly. <laughs> so, you, I mean, you know, so you I mean, like that, that mentality that, in basketball? I, I, I do. I, I do. I, and, 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 you know, you couldn't do it today, yeah. right? But um, not without sitting out half the season. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I don't know. If you, if you checked it up in the, you know, in the, in the whatever, 10 o'clock at night with the lights on and, uh, you know, in New York City, you know, it said, I know where my money would be. You know what I mean? Without mm-hmm. without any any rules and whistles and T V cameras. You okay. know, and it would be on it would be on the Jordans and the Kobe's of the world. I, mean, yeah. I think that yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, I I would think that uh if if they were on the same team, Jordan would still be the man. Uh and LeBron would be his pippin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question there real quick and then we can Fire move on you, you, you're, it's your show yeah I know right but um God, what was my damn question uh, uh, now you're fired so, squirrel so, yeah, yeah, you're fired producer so, <laughs> so I, I uh, one thing that I mean I feel like today's game remember what I just said I love you know Jason Tatum he, he dunked on LeBron and whatever I mean mm-hmm. but see the, the thing I liked about that was that he that he challenged him, okay? Yeah. And see, I feel like today's game, some of the, and people will say this about Jordan too, What I, I do think that superstars don't get challenged as much. I mean, you're, you know, you're worried about getting a poster made out of you or being on yeah. ESPN or, you know, but back, you know, back then. But they were going the after 90s, LeBron the 80s, last year a lot because he was lazy when he was Yeah, they did more because getting old, I guess. But, <laughs> um, but I feel like there were, there were just times where I'd see these guys in this era just, I mean, uh, uncontested through the lane. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, people just they only go after. Him. I mean, so I, I like that. I think I like that 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 part of the game where people came went after you. And oh yeah, by the way, even though they were going after you, you still put up thirty in the finals and yeah. were six and zero. Oh. Okay. Even though you had people coming at you, you know. Yeah. So that says you're a southern boy, so you gotta like football then. I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And yeah. what what was your team? Well, see, I grew up. So I grew up in North Carolina. This is skins, right? And and so I grew up in North Carolina. And at that time, because I'm so damn old, the you Redskins. either got you either got coverage from the Redskins TV coverage, or you got Dallas. Redskins for the uh, Redskins, or you got uh, oh, for the Falcons. So they're really your only two choices. Um, <laughs> and then I never converted over to Panthers. I just you know I was yeah. in, in it to win it with the skins. So oh, it's been okay. a hard road. Yeah, all right. Do you know who the best football team is? It's the New York Giants. New Jersey. <laughs> no. New Jersey. Oh. It is the New York Giants. <laughs> the New York Giants. 
<laughs> All right, well, the skins, uh, I mean, you haven't had too many happy seasons uh, no, no, in no. your adult since life, re- you know? Since Riggins. <laughs> yeah. <right>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if for a skins fan, your, your, your happiness is like trickle-down economics, you know? It <laughs> is, You're yeah. still waiting it, on it. <laughs> and, it and it kills me because it's one of the wealthiest franchises, you know, in sports, I think. <laughs> And it's right <laughs> there. I've been to, we've been to a couple of skins games, so. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's it start it started when we started drafting people like Heath Schuler. Like, Remember that guy? Who played yeah. in Tennessee, but, uh, but anyway, it um, yeah, like, it, it's been a, it's been um, like all the, the, all the are, I still have all my I have all my cards. I have all my football. You know, my old football cards like Daryl Green and Art Monk. Well, and, well, yeah, you know. the golden years. Yeah, <laughs> There's the golden years. Oh yeah. yeah, the skins are kind of like that team that whenever we see them on a schedule. We just go ahead and put two W's, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, who's like, your team, Thomas? The Giants. Oh, the Giants too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm born and bred in, in New York, yo. So. <laughs> and we could have gone with the Jets. I mean, Broadway Joe. I mean, how could yeah, you know nah. any guy? Any guy can mm. wear any guy can wear a fur coat on the sidelines. Has got my vote. Yeah. Yeah. But if you right. want to win, you're better off being a Giants than a Jets. So. Yeah, because they, they ain't any better than you guys are. Like, y'all both sitting in a, <laughs> in a sta- at the stag table. <laughs> like, I, uh, I, I, have a, I have that picture. Rings of, dusty uh, as hell. Of, uh, <laughs> I've got that picture of Namath in a fur coat. Um, mm. Uh, in like a little like in a little frame thing. I, don't yeah. know, I, I think that, 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 there's nothing more... Money than that. So, yeah. uh, guys, you, 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 know, you know which you know which photo I'm talking about, right? Uh, no, I don't think I do. I'm gonna have you to don't know. Go, just Google Google Joe Namath's fur coat on the sidelines. My man was on the sidelines of a football game wearing a fur coat. Okay, <laughs> that's <laughs> well, definitely. <laughs> Well, uh, that was back in the day. Yeah, I mean, back Terry, in the day. Terry Bradshaw used to look dope out there. You know, the old school dudes. Yep. They were cowboys. You know, they did what they want. <laughs> cowboys and uh. Oh, uh, uh, fat cats. You know they did what they wanted. So mm. that's right. But um, uh, so once again, getting back into lawyer, military man. You know, um, you know, football guy. Back when uh, Kaepernick was doing his thing, um, what was your opinion about it then? And you know, fast forwarding to now and everything that's going on. What's your opinion? Has your opinion changed or or gotten any? No, stronger? I mean I uh. I thought that you should, if you're asking me whether you should be able to kneel or not, I mean, the answer is unequivocally for me, yes. Okay. So, I mean, I have, you know, um, I had a buddy of mine that was, um, that was, um, he was deployed, and when he came back, we were talking about it, and he told me, I worked with him when I was on active duty, he was a Marine, and he told me we were talking about this issue, and, and I'll never forget him saying this. He said, "You know, he said, you know what, what, what burns me up is, uh, and, uh, and I said, what's that? And I'll probably screw it up. But anyway, I said, what's that? And he said, uh, he said, you know, when you hear people on TV say that it's disrespectful to the troops and they're down there doing what they do for, for us, mm-hmm. you know? And he said, no offense. But I ain't doing that shit for you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know I, I never mean? even felt it's, like it was. It, yeah. I mean, he was like, you know, he said, I, I'm doing it, one, because it's my country. And I think it's the right thing to do when we're in a war. And then, two, I'm doing it because of my family. But, you know, I mean, I think he was a little sideways about it because he thought it was it was an overgeneralized excuse that was just used to sensationalize things, right? Like, Indeed. Mm-hmm. these guys are doing this for They're me. fighting for your well, freedom. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, so... Um, uh, but I, you know, I, I, I can't think of a reason why, I mean, we do, we talk about the importance of peace protests, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we all agree that's important. What, 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 I mean, what other better example of a peaceful protest is that? Yeah. I mean, just because, you know, just, just because it, you know, you take a different view doesn't mean that that makes it, it, it makes it wrong. But did it screw up your football? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right which, i mean i it just you know I think, and, and even now when you turn on the more conservative shows right it's a peaceful protest peaceful protest but that kaepernick doing that was one of the best examples of a peaceful protest yeah. right mm-hmm. that basically almost in, i guess pretty much ended his career and the and, funny thing um, is is that no one had to even show it like like 
you can control the camera. Like you can't control a thousand people walk uh, not a thousand people, a hundred, two hundred people walking down the streets of New York or the streets of Charlotte. Or you can't you can't control it not being seen. It's at mm-hmm. least gonna be seen by the people that are passing by. Whereas right. Callan Coppinet is one guy <laughs> in a stadium of thousands <laughs> mm-hmm. sitting yeah. kneeling down on a sideline. Like you you don't have to point a camera at him. You don't have to put a mic in you his face. You don't have face. to highlight it. You don't have to highlight it at all. You make that decision to highlight it and then to say, ooh, I don't agree with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you could have yeah. easily ignored it like yep. people do homeless people. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, nobody yeah. says, hey, I hate homeless people. It's disrespectful to the street, homeless people. <laughs> you know, you just say, get a job, you fucking slob, and keep walking. <laughs> So, um, it, uh, I mean, yeah, and you got to remember too. I, anyway, I we don't have to go down too far in the rabbit hole on the legalities of it, but no, um, please do. No, it's I, your field. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why do you think I got you on the phone? <laughs> Been talking to you for all this time. You... It's like we're at a dinner party, and we hey. just wanna, we just found out you're a lawyer. And we want to ask you some tax questions. You better put out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always but I you, bought you I, dinner. It was, yeah. I think it, it just got overblown. I, you know, I, I, you know, there's nothing. Whether you know, because I guess you could you could look at it as an obs, uh, an offensive expression of speech, right? I guess, okay. Because you know, it's sorry. Yeah, and but that's okay, isn't that okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, as long as it doesn't incite violence. I mean, that's one of the big sort of bright lines on the expression of. Uh, of uh, freedoms, you know, of mm-hmm. expression or of speech is that bright line rule of, well, are you inciting violence? That kind of takes it into a different area. But um, I don't know. I mean, I thought it was a, it was profound. I mean, and, and particularly as much publicity as it got, I was disappointed yeah. in a lot of the responses about, I think I just heard you say your football game. Who gives a fuck about you? I'm sorry, who gives a damn about your football game? Oh, right? no, no, I no, mean, no. I mean, we're not PG. Yeah. You can curse if you like. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, what the, but what the guy is talking about is a serious, a serious societal issue. Mm-hmm. And I could, re- you know, and, you know, you're not covering your spread. Who gives a shit? I mean, you've got, you know, um, mm-hmm. even, you know, got some real societal ills that need to be addressed. And even and then, you would still cover your spread because it was before the game. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> right. and the game would still go on, and your team either won or lost. So, um, right. I, I don't know. I try to. I just try to be. You know, because there are other things I can't think of right now. But I mean, because I'm a pretty I'm kind of a libertarian guy. But okay. there are. I'm sure there are things that that offend me. But I try to take a step back and look at it. You know. Uh, the, the best ideas come from you know the marketplace of ideas, right? And that means you have to you have to evaluate all of them and consider yeah. all of them, no matter how how ridiculous you might think they are, how offensive you think they are. You might learn something from it, right? Uh-huh. And um, you know, I don't know. So I know I mean I'm sorry, very long winded answer to your question, which is you know I I supported I supported the kid, and um, you know and I thought it, it went completely in the wrong direction. Okay, um, I think it was but, a good answer. All yeah. right, um, but here's now. Let, let's go down a little rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> um, like you said, the the whole thing. Hey, they're fighting for our freedoms, and you're disrespecting the military, and you're disrespecting the police, and they're fighting for our freedoms, and and blah blah blah. At the time, it was more military than police, and then it kind of morphed into police after right. was, after he got kicked out and all that, but. In the military, and I personally, and this is just TMC talking, I never felt like the purpose of the military was to fight. Like maybe back in the Revolutionary War, 1700s, but now I don't think we fight for freedom too often. <laughs> like yeah. from yeah. a military perspective, do you feel like that's what uh, you guys are currently doing? I mean, you're in the guard, so you know. You, you know, yeah. Your <laughs> well, a lot of our guys get deployed. Man. A yeah. lot. The, the guard, the guards changed in that respect a lot. You'd be surprised. Yeah. I yeah. mean, how many yeah. guys get activated? It, but it, it has. I got um, lucky. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, that's right. You, you were, yeah, you were in that time when everybody got drunk on the weekends yeah, at drill. Exactly. <laughs> <That's right>. uh, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I, I mean, I hate to toe the company line, but I think that um, I, you know, I, I do think that. Yeah, well, let me back up for a second. So 
you know, we don't, we, in the military, we don't just decide that we're going to go somewhere and do something right. Okay. Um, the Congress and, you know, higher ups decide that kind of stuff. Indeed. So I, but I think that, you know, I, I can say that my chain of command all the way up to, all the way up to the general officers of fire service, I, mean, I don't think they're influenced by big corporations and things because I don't know if that's where you're going, but you know, well, there were a lot of arguments about, well, why are we in, why are we really in the sand? Right. And yeah. a lot of it was to maybe protect oil interests. Right. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, that was the argument back then. I mean, our guys personally, you know, I don't think they think that way or even in the chain because they, you know, the military is pretty good about making sure you don't have interest bleeding over into the private Indeed. world. Okay. You, you know, you know, but you do have, politicians right okay. directing your actions and whether or not they're politically tied to some other interest well i can't so, speak so, to that but so I, you me, know. me me i guess speaking um putting uh my point on it is is less fighting for freedom and more fighting for the will of the uh controlling body yes well because they, that's that, they're the ones that tell us where to go now once once you're there mm -hmm. um you know, uh, that's hard. You know, most of my active duties have been by the flagpole, as they say, because okay. I guess I got lucky. I got lucky in that regard, right? So, I mean, I can tell what you. Does that all mean? I can tell you. He is uses from, so many military uh, by terms. the flagpole means yeah. stateside. So, okay, I, so okay. you know, my last tour was at headquarters. You know what I mean? So I had to come oh. up to DC and do okay. some work up here. It was it was not uh, downrange, as they say. The point. But um, <laughs> downrange as you know, in another I, country. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, we um, downrange. So yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously, the will of higher ups gets you there, and then once okay. you're there, again, I don't think I can give an opinion on. It. I can just tell you that guys I've represented that were there, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think they did feel a strong sense of trying to do good okay. while they were there. Okay, you know, I really do because. I mean, because, you know, Mark Twain was the one, he said, um, he said, uh, travel cures all prejudice, right? And, 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 you know, so I think, you know, the, the guys I know anyway, they went there and they said, oh, shit, things are really bad here. You know what I mean? Okay. And like, yeah. this kid's, you know, this kid, mm -hmm. you know, these women are being persecuted, this kid's starving or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they saw those things and they wanted to change things and do things. So I think... That was that was the um, the interpretation I got from some so of the folks that I dealt so with really closely. But. Sometimes while you're there, sometimes people do get the sense of, hey, if we fail, then perhaps freedom could fail. And it might not necessarily be. Uh, now, do the military, within the military, do is there a sense of feeling like you are the, the world's police? Or once again, it's as simple as we do what we're we're uh enlisted to told do. to do yeah yeah um no i mean i think again i can't speak for the military i get in trouble if i speak for the military so this is just the world oh. according to jason um yeah yeah i, I the, get ph philosophical yeah. jason <laughs> yeah that's right. that's right hypothetically uh i think that um i think that we um I, I'll, I'll say this about united states not mm -hmm. the the United States. I mean, I think in a lot of in a lot of regard, we still are the policeman or policewoman or police person or whatever, whatever is politically correct um, of the world, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, that's the reality. That kind of like, that kind of like Spider Man said, you know, with oh. great power comes great responsibility. You didn't see that movie? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> He's a, a great big line. movie person. <laughs> He's a great line. He's a huge um, and that's guy. true. I mean, we, you know, so I think there's a, there, I just think it's one of those things that there's always a mix, right? I mean, mm -hmm. is, are we here for the right reasons? And, and I, I mean, I like to think, and maybe it's just me, you know, mm. being a homer, but <laughs> I mean, I like to think for the most, for more times than not, we're, you know, there's some right reason that, that we're there. Are, are those, are, do other reasons bleed in? Maybe, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it's, and I wasn't around, of course, in the Vietnam era, but, you know, I, I, I would bet you that folks from that era would have a much different opinion, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and especially stuff that's come out since that time, you know, about, you know, we, we mm -hmm. knew we couldn't win here or we were doing this, you know, all that kind of shit. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, but I do, I do know that the guys, um, the ones that I know, you know, they're all, 
I mean, they, they you know, they're, they're drinking the Kool Aid, as we say in the army. You know, it's like <laughs> drinking the Kool Aid. You know, but uh, but they're all you know, they're good cats. I mean, yeah. I haven't, Indeed. I've never really, I've never en- encountered one that came back and um, was. Actually, I mean, now I think about it, I've never had someone come back. I've never, this is true, I've never had someone come back and that I defended or became close to that uh, felt like we shouldn't have been there. That's a fair okay. statement. I, I don't think right. I've ever had oh. anybody do that. Oh, wow. All right. Well, that's that's a great yeah. perspective, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. kind of pulling back the curtain a little bit um, to show that, yeah, you know, um, sometimes uh, the efforts that are put forward aren't in vain. They are appreciated. They're appreciated obviously here by the uh, civilian population. Um, but at the same token, you know, it's also one of the things that we do protest for. We protest for respect for ourselves, respect for, for the people who serve, because a lot of people who serve come from communities <laughs> that aren't being yeah. respected. You know what I mean? So yep. it's, it's, it's a lot of things just basically saying that, hey, man, we're part of the team as well. And um, the team of a, of a America. 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 Yeah. America. America. <laughs> America. <laughs> That's right. You know, and it's, you know, it, it, you know, freedom's an interesting thing to not to go back to it, but it, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, cause I, I have heard, uh, it said before, you know, uh, you know, get out of here. We shouldn't be there. Things, you know, you know, they're a sovereign and, you know, this is, um, you know, you're, we don't want what you have kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you haven't had the freedom, right? You, you don't really have anything to balance it against. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, kind of like, it, it's like, you know. Uh, Plus, you know, it, you know it's, right now, I mean, you you probably can't speak on this, but right now, uh, you know, democracy and, and things like liberty is being challenged a little bit. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we certainly don't want to lose ours. <laughs> Hell no. That's right. So, yeah. Kicking so, and screaming. Yeah. So, you know, um, but it's, yeah, okay. it's weird that, you know, while we are the freedom fighters of, of the world and we're out, our military, or at least as the civilian population say when they want to tell someone to stop protesting, they're out fighting for our freedoms. But here we are fighting for our freedoms and the military is being used mm-hmm. to clear out. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got you. Yeah, I got you. Right. To clear That's out right. the town square. <laughs> so yeah. it's it's uh there's there's a little bit of a paradox yeah. going on right now. And yeah, I, I tra- I'm tracking. And yeah. my heart is with everybody um, here at TMC for JMC show. We definitely are outspoken about it um, and things like that. Now, being, well, there's, there's, uh-huh. definitely, there's definitely good grounds for it. You know, I can't. I mean, I know we don't have to spend it into all everything that happened. Oh, thanks, man. You've been giving me a lot of permission. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's definitely grounds. I mean, I can't, you know, I've, I've watched the video Episode many times. Episode would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? His directorial debut. <laughs> yeah, Jason's awesome. He's a great director. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, don't you have mace and handcuffs? I mean, give me a fucking break. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like that whole thing. I mean, you could you could take down the biggest. You could this guy could be six eight three ten, and he'll go down with a, a can of mace like a little kid. Well, you know what yeah. I mean. I mean, <clears throat> depending on yeah. what you're seeing. They mason a lot of kids. <laughs> like, 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 yeah, they, what? They mason oh. everybody out there. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, I mean, but I meant the actual event. Whereas yeah. me, like you know, oh, yeah, yeah. back. Well, and, like, yeah. I a, mean, I'm like you know. I, mean, I don't know because I'm not. A, I'm, I'm not. am not a cop, so I don't know. It's like, but it just seems to me that and it's probably worth shut up. But I'm not going to. But it seems to me that you, if, if you, if. And again, I don't know because I'm not. An, I've never had any of that training. But it just seems to me that if you know, in situations like that, couldn't you just mace somebody and handcuff them? Well, we I mean, have a video that we're going to play uh, a little later. Um, you know, after we get rid of your ass. That <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, okay, basically it kind of breaks down. They they put together cameras from all over the area to put together like the last 16 minutes or so uh, for him. So basically this thing um, backtracks all the way from when he came out the store and crossed the street and got into his car and pe- 
the kids from the store who were working at the store and thought he passed over the bad 20. They come to the car. They approach him. I don't know. Maybe he told him to fuck off. I, I don't know. Uh, but they go back to the store. They don't get the money. They don't get the cigarettes. They go back to the store. And that's when they make the call to the cops. Mm-hmm. So the cops, they come and they park a little bit off from where his car was parked. And actually, he had somebody in the car with him. Um, they then take him back to their um, as they're taking him back to their cop car from his main car. He's already showing signs of distress um, in terms of like saying that he because I guess the story is that he's claustrophobic. Oh, and that was the original reason that because he's already talking about how he's having trouble breathing before right. when they when they're walking him back to the car like he's standing up he's walking is whatever mm-hmm. so as they trying to put him back in the car into the cop car he's kind of like whoa i don't want to get in now mm-hmm. these are the first two cops that showed up on the scene these are not the dude that finally um what's his name Derek and Shaw whatever the fuck and um the mm-hmm. Asian dude um mm-hmm. they hadn't showed up to the scene yet they showed up to the scene to when the two cops were trying to put him into the car Right. So that's when they get involved and they get him in a car. But for some reason, the dude that finally put his neck, uh, knee on his neck, they decided to pull him back out of the car. Or, or maybe okay. he, he was coming out. of. They never fully closed the door and got him in the car. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So now mm-hmm. he's pulled out the car and he's on the ground. And at this point, two people pull out their cell phones almost simultaneously. One person is the video that we all see. Mm-hmm. That's the one where you only see the, the, the cop standing there looking into the camera and you got the Asian dude talking to everybody. But the other camera angle, that's where you see the other, you see that there's, a, I think, a total of four cops holding him down. Or maybe three. I don't recall right now. We'll see when the video goes. At one point, the, the people tell the person that's recording from that angle to get the fuck out of there. So that's why that person turns off their phone and, you know, moves mm-hmm. on. And we don't have a full length video mm-hmm. from that angle. Mm. <clears throat> so throughout all this time, even before, like I said, even before he's on the ground with the knee on him, he's showing signs of distress. He's exhibiting right. signs of distress and he's telling them, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Now they got the yeah. knee, they got the knees on him and... Mike Derrick or whatever the fuck his name is, he's telling him, get up, get in the car. And the guy's and like, still has his knee on. yeah, and the guy's like, I can't, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I will get up and get in the car. He even says that I will. And the guy's like, I've been waiting here all this time. You still haven't gotten in the car right. You know, and he still got his knee on him. So long story short, no. dude cries for his mom, goes unconscious and you know, this, yeah. the rest yeah. is history. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I might, have to, I might have to see that. Are you going to put that? I've never yeah. seen the full, yeah, it's, it's that, got, that's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's going to be yeah. in the, uh, in the, the full length of this show, uh, that goes up, uh, probably tomorrow. And yeah, cause so, I'll, I'll, you can, my, my, my narrow, I'll, very I'll narrow blinders. I even shoot you the link. I'll even shoot you the yeah, link so you can do watch that. it tonight. That'd be good. Cause my whole, my, you know, narrowness uh, of all of it. But I, because yeah, I was just thinking to myself when I watch things like that, it's, that's not the first one we've seen. The, you know, this sort of over, and again, I know, God, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm just, I'm just opining on like these things that I've seen specifically uh-huh. where there's so much like physical restraint. I'm thinking, I don't know, man, I, you know, pepper spray will put somebody down in a minute. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, 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 there's a, there's a, I represented he was a Fayetteville PD for 10 years and um he told yeah that and I'm actually he's the one that passed this on to me where you know he said in 10 years I you know I use a lot of pepper spray with the stuff going on over <laughs> there in, in Fayetteville at the time and you know he said there was only one guy in 10 years that he ever saw that it didn't phase mm. you know what I mean mm. and, he, and he said it was the easiest way for him to diffuse a situation yeah, without sure. like serious force yeah exactly yeah Exactly, and there's a way to do it. It's been proven. And even then, it's it's. I feel like we're in a place where we have to, where law enforcement have to. Yeah, you you almost have to be, um, you, you law enforcement is going to have to take on, uh, to take on a doctor's pun, uh, develop some bedside manner. 
You know what I mean? Because if anything, they're the ones that's coming to your bedside. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like just like yeah. a doctor would. They're the ones that's going to see you at your worst, be it your worst behavior, your worst moment. You're in the need of the yeah, most sure. help. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they have to be your the only ally you have. You might be in a place where you're being accused of something. And granted, they don't know that you're being accused of something. But... They don't even know that you're guilty of something. Yeah. This guy was being accused of passing off a fake 20 to buy some cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> It always has to do with cigarettes, too. I mean, is that the story for real? <laughs> yeah, I believe so. I yeah. believe that's the story. And uh, I'll correct it later on the show if it's not. But wow. either way, um, yeah, a fake 20 to buy some cigarettes. And he loses his life. And, and, and that's because there's, there's zero... Regardless if we want to say, okay, this guy is a racist and he wants to go do that. He wants to go do that. Let's put that to the side a bit. There definitely was zero empathy. Like, I'm oh, here yeah. to put you down. You did wrong. I'm called. I'm here to put you down. Hence, hence, there is no need to, when you got somebody in their cuffs, why are you dragging them around? They're right. in cuffs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, um... Well, yeah, because it seems to me that it seems to me that the point is I mean, you should use again. I don't, this is just the world according to Jason. Mm -hmm. You 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 know you you use force when you're if you're if you if you're threatened or you think it's created a dangerous situation and that person needs to be subdued in some way, right? Yeah. Um, seems like that's the general gist of it. I'm sure it's a lot more complicated than that. But and how do you achieve that? Well, I, it seems like you know, like you just said, well, you're in handcuffs. I mean, you're pretty well i mean I, you know you probably have a it seems to me you could eliminate the threat in other ways right. more often than not than just than like you know you know gang beating a dude or something you know what i mean just, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah you, you don't you, 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 you don't have to go to 100 yeah. if you only need yeah. 10 <laughs> that's right that's right and i mean and they're all you know they're all different those concepts are pretty well established in the law like in self defense for example i mean if somebody is coming to stab you with a pencil you can't shoot them you know what I mean? That, that's not self. That's not self defense because it's not, you know, it's not equal use of force, right? Although you may so, not, hmm. you may or may not, um, this may or may not be in your expertise. But from a basic, if you have any basic understanding, please share. How does that apply to say the stand your ground law? Uh, it's not my expertise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I would feel comfortable uh, opining on it uh, from a legal perspective. Does, does North my, Carolina have my, one? My point, by by point, uh, I think they do. Okay. Yeah, that's state that's state specific. Uh, but I don't want to say that, and then people say, "Oh, well, Jason said that they." Have <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, so anyway. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Your name your name uh, on the show is that lawyer guy. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, TLG. Good. Um, <laughs> that uh, I know I would stand my ground, but the um, <laughs> um, uh, what I was gonna say it seems like a similar. I know it's dangerous to make analogies, but sort of a similar analogy, right? Where it's, you know, as long as you diffuse the situation, that's all you need to do. All the other stuff is just extracurricular, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, somebody is posing a serious threat and the guy's like a mountain, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I can put the mountain down with pepper spray and some uh, ties. And then, do I need to do anything else? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I, yeah, I've diffused the threat. You know, you know, take your machismo out of the situation, but then and just do your job. But yeah. then, in the world, according to to uh, TLG and TMC, you know, mm -hmm. if I had to play a little bit of devil's advocate, um, mm -hmm. would would I would I say that it is is their job is fair to to assume that the cop has to or any person for that matter has to do the math of, hmm, this guy, he's big as a mountain. He poses a serious threat. But I'm just going to try this technique, and if it doesn't work, then I'm going to pull out another technique, and if that doesn't work, then I'm going to go guns a-blazing. Right. Is it fair to put that person in that position when it, when it might be safer for that person to just go guns a-blazing? Uh, I think so, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because 
I think so. Okay. I think this would, this would be my argument, is that much like the young guy in the military that we were just talking about where you signed up for certain things. Indeed. And, you know, I might not want to go down range and shoot people and get myself shot at and get my and all this other kind of stuff. I don't know. I mean, I think when you serve the public good, um, you know, you you have to go about things a little bit differently, you, you know, and um, I mean, if the guy, if you caught the guy, you know, in the middle of raping someone, you know, do you go to guns blazing? Maybe you do. But if you don't know, you know, mm-hmm. I think you do have to, I don't know, it seems to me you might have a responsibility. Yeah. Uh, given, it, given that you don't know everything about what's going plus on. Plus, the responsibility uh, is to catch the criminal, not necessarily kill the criminal. That's, that's right. And, 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 you know, and you you don't know. I mean, you, you know, you, you don't know. So you have to, I, I do, I think you should do that incremental step of lowest, first, middle, highest. Now, okay. if you catch someone in the if you catch someone in the act and it's a violent act, yeah. then yeah, I think you can go to step three pretty quick. Um, but otherwise, you know, I don't know. That's, I, I, that's cool. just my opinion. I don't hey, know that that's true I, or not. But I, I mean, we don't we don't have to get back into it. But uh, <laughs> like Spider Man yeah. said, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <If> I, <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Um, but anyway, so I've. Uh, Good. No, I was, hey, it's been about an hour and some change, and uh, hey, I've been enjoying well, having you on here, man. Um, we, yeah. I hope that we can get your perspective on this show more often. Uh, we, I love you it. know, have you on this, you know, hey, I'll even come up with a segment, so don't get me started, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, obviously, you know, you know I like to talk. I mean, Jackie told me I had about... Uh, five minutes, so I think I've done pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 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 you owe us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jackie said, listen, I don't want you on here six minutes, I don't want you on here eight minutes, I want you on here five. Five, so, and you stay to that. <laughs> Even my dogs are like, you still talking to that lawyer guy? <laughs> That's right. So, but well, no, it was awesome. You got any shout-outs you want to give to anybody, my man? <laughs> uh, hey, what kind of music you listen to, bro? <clears throat> uh, it's a good question. So today, I listen to every morning. I listen to Frank Sinatra in the morning. Oh, no wow. way. Yeah, I do every morning. Wow. Okay. I, I, I promise you. Every. I don't knock that. Uh, Frank, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Frank was the man. Um, so my, my, if you want, if for if for a young man, my way is one of the best anthems you could live. But as a young man, you know, that, that's a great song. If you listen to the My Way, Frank Sinatra, anyway, or My Way, Usher? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going with the Frank, or I don't even, I don't know that I know the other, well, I do know the other version, but I'm going with Frank. Uh, so, um, yeah, no, I don't think oh, he does. God. I don't know. I mean, I just say, I, mean, I uh, where am I going with this? So, the Stones, are like, probably my favorite sort of rock band was the okay. Stones. Okay. And then, of course, I'm a '90s rap guy because I was, you know, high school and college in the '90s. Who was your Who, um, who was your jam in the '90s? Who was your your, your rapper in the '90s? Oh, okay, so uh, Mace. <laughs> Mace. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you do you what? know Do you know any lines from a Mace song? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that question. I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, I'd have to, no, I'd have to, no, because I was probably not in my right straight of mind. But, <laughs> um, he was a partier. But, uh, I mean, and then, you know. of course, you know, I had, I had to go with, um, well, you know, the, the regulars, like Dr. Dre. And stuff. I mean, those are my guys. That's okay, pretty much okay so you was down with that gin and juice? Popular, yeah, definitely the popular stuff, and Tupac and, and Biggie and all that stuff. But um, mm-hmm. what else is kind of so I like some I like some older stuff. I mean, you, you know, Rod Stewart. Okay. I don't know. Like I'm, All right. I've got you know. Um, he was listening to Guns N' Roses but, earlier today. Yeah, you, you're gonna yeah, like but, you're gonna like T4J Easy then uh, T4J The Lounge. That's uh, we have uh, our own radio uh, station actually. Uh, the Lounge is gonna uh, debut. Well, it's gonna re debut on the <laughs> on the Friday, but. T4J, the basement, is basically everything you were just talking about. 90s hip-hop, uh, old school hip-hop, the gold school, going back to Run DMC, Fat Boys, up to yeah, nice. up to Das FX, uh, Ice Cube, N.W.A., Dr. Dre, Eminem, and Jay-Z. 
combined with local artists here in North Carolina. Um, so all, all these concerts and all these performances, we go to these people who are just getting their start off, underground artists. We blend them in and that. So that's T4J Radio, The Basement, which is up right now uh, at tmc for jmccom But on Friday, uh, we did the testing and we ran it for about a week. And mm-hmm. it, it had a lot of good feedback. And I'm looking forward to this coming out. Uh, coming back is T4J Radio, The Lounge. And what that is, that's jazz, my man. That's uh, oh, nice. classic rock. That's easy listening rock. So we're talking about Buffalo Springfield. Um, something happening in here. <laughs> All the way to, to uh, yeah, Rod Stewart. Young hearts be yeah. free oh, to, yeah. to, <laughs> <laughs> to jazz. Um, you know, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, to, to yeah, to... Um, a little bit of Prince. To Prince, Rolling Stones, Beatles, you name it. If it's, if it's easy, basically, Bob FM, watch your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> T4J Radio, the lounge is going to... Uh, we coming. Eat, yeah, we're eating some of your space. So, you know, so yeah. I'll make sure you get the link for that too, man. Jam it in the I office. Will. It's definitely going to be safe for work music. <laughs> I will. And then if, I, if I'm if I'm feeling real frisky, I'll throw on some little Kim just to bring it back. Oh, okay. Then that the 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 original queen. Every you know because anyway. The original queen. Yeah, the original queen. Uh, that was that was my that was my girl in the nineties. Little sure. three six mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, I don't know, yeah, man. I, I, I can't see you pulling uh, out that little Kim CD, hardcore. Uh, the one with did you have the poster the one where she's squatting down? Nah, let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. I was just a bit. I was just a big fan because you know how she was. She wasn't scared to say how she felt. You know what I mean? Mm. That was. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She kind of turned. She kind of turned you on. That that that, <laughs> that, that chocolate <laughs> booty. <laughs> She would take her. She'd take it. She'd take a young man to a good place. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, I, I, did, I did not think I would talk about Little Kim on your show. <laughs> so I so, then, so then, either. I mean, I know you're a married man now, so it's it, it, yeah. you know it's uh, it's it's, it's we're more talking about uh in a, in a world where, in another you know, dimension. Yeah, in a, in, a, in an eighth yeah. dimension. Uh, so sure. so you're 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 free love. You're you you got. You you okay with jungle fever? You're not like, hey, everybody should only you know love their own kind and things like that. No, 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 not at okay. all. I mean, I so I, I you know, and we, you're right. I mean, we're all talking about hypothetical kind of things. So, I mean, you know, Halle Berry is in my top three for sure. Oh, that's his hall pass. That's your hall pass. That's Holly his Harry? hall pass. <laughs> Halle Berry's yeah, your hall pass. Wait, tell him what your <laughs> wife's hall pass is. Uh, she has two. Uh, yeah. The first is Matthew McConaughey. Uh, okay, Avi. Se- and then her second is uh, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake? Yeah, tell him why. Yeah. JT. Because he can JT. dance. Because he can dance. Because he can dance. And that boy's. Hey, like, he's he's gonna be like, sing a song for me. <laughs> ain't nobody love you. But, <laughs> okay, I mean, but those are kind of easy, like, hall passes. Would you feel the same way yeah. if she said her hall, she wanted DMX to be her hall pass? <laughs> like, yo, I'm barking at your wife. Uh, uh, Miss Moy, uh, 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 lose my mind. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm gonna lose my mind up in here. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great! <laughs> oh my goodness, that's oh, freaking awesome. Um, so- big if he gives me one of his gold chains, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it even. Well, you might get no, one because he might need yeah. some tax representation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's right. That's right. Who was the guy that uh, I got to go to? I'm sorry that my kiddo's waiting for me. But who was the guy that, uh, oh, it was ODB. Didn't, so he, he was, when he was, remember, remember he had already, he was already rich. Mm-hmm. And then he showed up to get a welfare check, didn't he? Yeah, so yeah. That yeah. 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 I'm sure if he was still with us, he would have gotten that stimulus check as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I always love that story. They like, rolled up in his Mercedes or something. Like <laughs> um, so in with style. that, my man, we're going to go out to break. Yeah. Break. 
my thank man. you so yeah, much but it's been um awesome having you on my man and actually yeah. don't hang out we're just gonna fade out and then we'll let you go um All but right. uh so thank you for having me thank yeah, you for having me. everybody uh that is tlg that lawyer guy he, <laughs> he has her name but it's irrelevant <laughs> and uh <laughs> this was the tmc for jmc show so give us an applause so we can fade out oh wait hold on I, i'm not even ready <laughs> right, i was kind of caught off guard here we go <laughs> <laughs> jmc on the effects y'all <laughs> Uh, okay. All right, we just gonna fade out. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Bye. We we'll see you after the break. <laughs> cool. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That was uh the Alf uh field. I don't want to lose your love. The outfield. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, that's the name of the. I never knew that was the name of the band. Yes, that's. Yeah. It, 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 I love that song. Can you hear me? Can I hear you? Um, speak. Hello. Yeah, you're coming through. Hmm, that's so weird. I can't hear me. Because we turned your mic down a little bit, but you're coming oh, through. Oh, okay, good. As long as I'm coming through, that's right. I forgot how loud I can be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want you to hear it's yourself. The story of my life. Can you hear me? Well, I can hear you. Yeah. I feel like I can hear you more through here than I can through there. Let's just see something real quick. <laughs> How about now? How about now? Speak. Hello. How about now? Cool. We need to walk. Can you hear me now? All right. I'm just going to kind of like just leave it the way it is. Okay. And we're going to hope for the best. Hopefully we won't do a whole episode and I won't have my baby. Well, I, I highly doubt that somehow. I still think you'll be able to hear me. <laughs> Was well, this through my mic or yours? <laughs> well, getting back to uh, the uh, ad. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's Once again, that's another song, a uh, type of song, music that you hear on T4J Radio, The Lounge. Uh, it'll be uh, returning uh, this Friday. Um, and, um, that's great. You know, I'm looking forward to it again. Me once too. Once again, you know, classic rock, old school soul, R&B do up mm -hmm. you know just just all kinds of feel good jams so yep. you know what i something mean something smooth to listen to something smooth to listen to if you want some some um some music to get your heart pumping and get out there and uh you know i don't Let's start your day off right i don't well <laughs> i don't condone <laughs> looting or anything like that but if you need some music to uh do it to T4J, the basement, probably going to play something that's going to get you in the Most mood. Most likely, it's going to raise that blood pressure. <laughs> you know, it's a public enemy or something. But, you know, like I said, you know, we're not encouraging any of that behavior. But, nope. Um, I, yeah, we understand. I understand a little bit. But hey, stay your ass home or protest peacefully. With that said, um, the lounge would definitely have some, some music that would chill you the fuck out. Yep. Man. Hell <laughs> yeah. You want to talk and love, man. Mm -hmm. Love, bro. And just like, you know, Freshville, Jefe Frescobar was saying, and hopefully he will be El Presidente, Jefe Frescobar. That's what they call them over there. Yeah, he definitely has my vote. They call them the El Presidente. They don't call them presidential. President. Oh, okay. It's the El, El Presidente election. So do you think that'll change once, like, he gets here? Like, if he wins this election, we won't be calling him Mr. President. We'll be calling him... El Presidente. Well, he's going to be president of Freshville, which is kind of like our allies. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's the alternative place if shit doesn't work out here. It's a place where... That's why it sounds people, so magical. People were thinking to kind of, hey, if things don't work out here, everybody, oh, go back to Africa. No, I'm going to Freshville. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. I want to go there too. <laughs> I do. Yeah. It sounds so awesome. The lounge would definitely be playing in Freshville and... You know, it's popular there. It's on know, our rating board all the time. Yeah, they definitely we get lots of screens from Freshville. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and another cool thing about Freshville and the lounge, you know, I'm a, I'm a hippie. Yeah. You know, I always felt like that's what I like to describe myself as. You know, regardless of anything else in life that people may label me as, hippie is the one that I kind of like the most. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and if we're going to be, 
We got us a normies on alert. No. We're going to be, you know. And, and the reason why is because I, I feel like, one, I like just to just love life and mm-hmm. love. I like people. Well, I, I, I say things all the time where I don't like to be, you know, I don't like to deal with so and so many people. When I'm with people, I like people. Right. And I like, I prefer to like people than to dislike people. Mm-hmm. And I was saying this a little bit earlier. Um, I feel like, as me also being a science guy, I feel like science tells us that you sh- it's better to like people than to dislike people. It's easier to like people than to dislike people. And it definitely is. And while <clears throat> why you might dislike them may seem big, it really isn't, and it really probably isn't even much. Right. You know. Um, like I was saying, you talk to anybody who is your enemy or perceived con- enemy, be it personal or on a st- group or on a state or on a national level mm-hmm. or even on a belief level. If you actually sat down and spoke with that person, you probably find that you guys have a lot in common. You probably enjoy a lot of things. Right. And you probably have a lot of things that uh, bring you together more so than divide you. Right. You know, you always hear the story, you take two babies or two kids and you put them in a room that haven't been taught anything. Those kids are going to start playing together and hugging and all kinds of shit because kids like, yo, you a kid, I'm a kid. They don't know any different. Seems like some fun stuff exactly. to do. Like, let's play. I don't want to sit and play by myself when there's a kid over there. Exactly. That likes to play. It's like, oh, you play? Cool, let's <laughs> yeah. play together. You you like to play? You want to play? Let's go. Let's play. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there's they, they don't have... And at that point, they don't have anything negative against each other. They only have things that they positively relate to. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, therefore, they don't have nothing to subtract. Right. But, okay, as you get older, certain things fall into the mix. You have influences. Influences, beliefs, and all kinds of dumb shit. Right. But ultimately, if you talk to someone, and I don't think, I don't care who they are. You know what I'm saying? If you speak with that person... You probably find things that you relate to. And, and and if you don't, then boom, you guys are just enemies. You know, you're nemesis and you're never going to be whatever. But most likely you do. And, you know, take it even back in like school days. There was people that wanted to beat my ass. Why? I don't really know. Never really knew why they wanted to beat my ass. But as far as I was concerned, that was the only thing that was in between me and that person being friends. Right. It was because they wanted to beat my ass. Right. Remove there that. There was nothing else. Yeah, remove that, and I'm cool with them. Um, I don't know what else they had. Right. And one day, this one dude, um, we kind of like, it was a talent show. And one of the dudes that was supposed to go on stage with, with us uh, reneged. And uh, it was going to be DeWick. We had to beat DeWick. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. do 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 I don't yeah. know my rap, so I ain't yeah. going there. <laughs> Yo, you're not. Nah. And so, I, th- I think we made him up on a spot. Okay. It was one of those things. So, anyway, we also were in a, a um, another class. Like, I think it was DECA or something together. Uh-huh. Or or maybe during the lead up to the talent show, um, we were, he, he and his group were practicing, and our group were practicing all in the same room. Right. So, it was kind of like, oh, all right. Well, you knew I, what you were up against, or something, or or just you know we saw each other. Oh, they rap too. Cool. All right, I ain't know this dude rap. I thought he was just trying to get pussy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I thought he was just trying to think he was bad or whatever. That was the thing I heard a lot about myself. I thought I was bad. Oh, uh, you were bad. I weigh I weigh hundred freaking ten pounds. <laughs> bad. Who's bad? Not me. <laughs> you know. So, um. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. I would, they call me Malo. <laughs> yeah, Malo. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, so I think that night either his dude reneged on him or maybe he performed then they were done. But I don't remember. But long story short, he was like, yo, he saw that my dude flaked on me. So he was like, yo, I'll go up there and rap with y'all. He was like, shit, we got two minutes of a beat that we have to fill. Yo, let's go. Oh, that's you know cool. He came up. He dropped his rap. It was seamless, like everybody didn't even notice that, you know, prior to that, I guess he wanted to whip my ass. As we came off stage, we was like, yo, man, we pieced it out, peace. Oh, that's so and, dope. It's like music brought you together. Yeah, rap, rap killed all that. So I don't know what he had 
against me, but I only had that one thing against him that he wanted to beat my ass. Right. I assumed that we rap, he no longer wanted to beat my ass, and we had rap in common. So just by doing the math, I had no reason to dislike him anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I should be happy and should find happiness with associating with this guy or just dealing with him on the plane that we were. Right. You know what I mean? Because you subtract the 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 negative, which is him wanting to beat my ass, mm. and it left rap. Even if by subtracting one, you have to take away a happiness. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just subtract, dis- dissolve the happiness. You have to, you know, now you got to do it when you got negative numbers and all that bullshit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even it's a if, whole lot. Even if th- that negativity, in order to get rid of that negativity, I had to sacrifice something positive that we had in common. Yeah. It still left us with nothing. A plain slate. A clean slate. That we can then build some shit on. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it, <laughs> so that was that. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, you know, and then there was a few others that, yeah, one beat my ass. But as we got to talk, they realized, okay, I don't want to beat your ass anymore. And frankly, I don't even know why I want to beat your ass. I think because, you know, you cute. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, is that what it usually was? I think? don't know. I don't want to cause anybody, you know. I just want to go to Freshville where there is nobody wanting to beat my ass. And no yeah, hater crats. Well, I'm adult now. Yeah, no hater crats. I'm adult now, so I don't, nobody don't deal with me. Nobody don't want to beat my ass. Nobody, nobody should want to beat an adult's ass. You know? Nobody should want to beat anybody's ass, but I feel you. Yeah, I don't want to beat nobody's ass. I'm a hippie. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, basic math should dictate that, um, <laughs> you know, we should like more each other more so than hate each other. Absolutely. It's it's and funny. it's easier. Yeah, just it's just not, and it comes natural. It's who, it's a natural thing. So to everybody, it takes whoever effort you hate to hate no, just do the math. Now there's going to be some people where once again, there's just like, like right now, take the president. I'm talking about him as a person. I haven't talked to him. Um, I can't think that I would sit down and talk to him, and without sacrificing. Something that I think makes me a good person. Yeah. Just because we all also should have our own list of stuff that makes us a good person and a bad person in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Like if nobody else was on this planet, you still have traits that would make you kind of an asshole. Right. And you still have traits that would make you an awesome person. You know what I mean? And then, boom, we start putting extra people in there and saying, go. We start the program. Well, without me having to sacrifice some of my good traits, I don't think that I could be cool and relate to this dude you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and probably even before he became president you know what i mean even when he was just you know rap donald trump you know the one everybody rapped about yeah yeah i think i probably would have been cool with his ass then yeah doing business maybe i don't know but he had a uh, history of you know companies and shit going bad so (laughs) allegedly so absolutely it's there's a difference between um not and it's funny because we, yeah, you're right. We've included Donald Trump in raps and all sorts of things. We've, you know, mm-hmm. we put him up there when it comes to naming people who have money and who have, you know, dominated in certain businesses. And, but if you think he's an asshole, you don't have to deal with his businesses. That's yeah. one thing. For those of us who did not vote Trump into office, we still have to deal with them. Yeah, exactly. No matter what. And like you said as well, you don't you've you don't you haven't talked to Donald Trump. You and you only know what you hear, what's reported, what's out there. You don't know him personally, but I still even though I don't agree with his stuff and I think he's a complete asshole, you know, um I still and I wouldn't sit with him in a room to have a conversation. I don't think I have that kind of attention span. I I don't think he has that kind of I could still span. be peaceful, you know, with him just I guess I could be peaceful. Stay away from me. That's all and no well, hate. Well, yeah, yeah, I could be peaceful with him, but I do dislike the president. I, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm not fond of him either. I, I'm not a fan yeah, at all. I not would at all. He not be the president. After he's not the president, I don't have any reason that that major reason for me to dislike him as a person now falls down to indifferent 
because of distance. Yeah. Just my hands you know keep what, going off the camera. You know, like if this was a movie, you know what would be the total like zinger of the whole movie? Like, what uh like the wow factor is if Obama had announced that he was going to run. Because technically, I mean, although he can't run two consecutive terms, yeah, he, can run again. He, he can run now. Yeah, he can run again. Yeah. You know, that would... As, as oh my God, Facebook. imagine how shocked everyone would be. That run, is shock and awe right there. He could run as uh, Biden's uh, vice and then run again after Biden runs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't so, think he wants to take that on. And not. So we're going to have fucking 16 years of Obama. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but... Right now, I feel like we're in the um, the man in the high cast castle. It, it was that was his name. That was that the name of the show? Man in the high castle. The one on Amazon. Yeah, I thought it was high cast. No, it's the man in the high castle. Oh, castle. Okay, but I thought it was like cast, like the cast system, uh, where fuck it, it wasn't, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, I mean. And like I said, so if he were to be removed from president, from the presidency, from office, one way or another, election, whatever, uh, then I'm, <clears throat> I have no need to dislike him anymore because, like I said, his influence of what he can do has, has been lowered. It's been right. subdued. So um, now if he leaves and he continues to try to spew what he's spewing and promote what he's promoting mm -hmm. and push what he's pushing, then, then yeah, I, I, I still would have a little bit more disdain for him um, than I would if he just rolled off into the sunset and be like, look, I, I banked while I could and it's over. You know what I'm saying? Um, but but in some ways, you kind of have to. It's kind of my my... I feel like it's my duty also to like, look, I can't like you. You can't, what you're doing can't be good. Right. You know what I mean? Like, sure, there's a lot of people out there that are murdering and raping and blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't like them motherfuckers either. You feel me? I just don't know them. Exactly. <laughs> the day I, I know them or get to know them or know of them, I'm not going to like them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. But for all you no-name rapers out there, I don't like you. <laughs> you got that strike again. Yeah, just no, sorry, yeah, man. No face, no face bandits. I don't like you. Sorry, not sorry. So, you know, um, but this dude, yeah, I don't like him. Um, <laughs> do I want to fight him? Nah, I don't. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight nobody. Luckily, there's another way. Yes. So yes. Um, now, hopefully, he don't want to fight me. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Ho hopefully. We are in a place where, you know, all this talk is just rhetoric. It's just yeah, uh, hyperbole. Is that the word? Hyperbole, right? Yeah, hyperbole. Hyper hyperbole. Yeah, I think I said it right. I think although, you said it right too, but you do have an accent, so I'm surprised I didn't screw it up because that's one I would have screwed up. But yeah, I, I'm. I hope it's just. You know, just talking crap. I hope he's not. But, you know, there's reports that there was a four-star general patrolling the streets of D.C. doing the protesting when they went to have to push them back and control all that. Mm -hmm. That's military stuff, bro. And yeah. I should have asked. Well, yeah. no, no, I'm glad I didn't ask. What's the fix? He's still um, TLG. I'm glad I didn't ask him. Because he's still in the military. He, he, you know. Yeah. It's his duty to, to fucking whatever. Yeah, absolutely. But that was a four-star general, bro. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? So that's real. That, that's not a battlefield. Mm-mm. That's a U.S. So, that's a U.S. city. You know what I mean? Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like the mayor of D.C. once was doing crack. <laughs> Back in the day. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's a US city, bro. Like there ain't no there ain't Fallujah or wherever else. Four star general. A four star general. Like th they said that That is crazy. That, that the helicopters were doing maneuvers that they would do like over you know, against terrorists or war zones, you know, it kinda look like they're gonna swoop down and do some shit and then right. swoop back out. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Like, bro, like, and you saw the video, like, where I showed you earlier, where the mainstream TV, and I don't want to call them mainstream, I'll say the big time networks. Right. What they were showing were, they, they weren't really showing, they were saying, well, they, they removed them and they shot tear gas. They told you. But their footage out there of actually what they did. And they beat the shit out of those fucking protests. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, they did. They, they, what, what they did was. It was not peaceful. They lined up the street mm-hmm. with the military police, right? So the military police got the streets lined up. So if you in, you there, you already boxed off to your left and your right. Right. So then what they did also is, I guess these are the regular police. They then. With their riot gear, which these little cool little sh- shields now, and they're all military out, they basically form this human wall that's probably like 10 deep, and it fills the whole street, and they just walk forward. Yeah. And if you ain't moving, you getting dumped. Like, you ain't getting like, hey, man, you know, we're going to put your hands behind your back so we can, no. You getting no, beat. you're getting beat. You're getting pushed Beat. down, yeah. pushed over. Exactly. And if you ain't moving. Possibly p- smacked. If you ain't moving fast enough, they running up on you and they pushing you. And even if you are moving fast enough, they probably still pushing you or shooting you at something just mm-hmm. so whatever. So now, like I said, they got the people on the side. And this video, you know, I'll post it on on my social medias and things like that. Yeah. But, you know, like I said. They, they got- weren't dispersing the crowd. They were moving them. They were, they was, yeah, they were destroying that crowd. By they force, if po- necessary. They were or unnecessary. It, it was, they, yeah, they were using force. Because some of that force was extremely they unnecessary. They were pulverizing that crowd. Like, and, like, there were reporters that were, like you said, they, like I said, they, was, they had them boxed in. So they couldn't, like, just back out of what they had. They had right. to go wherever the police were forcing them to go. Right. So, you know... So whenever they would catch up to, to say, there was this reporter, this cameraman, and as the crowd caught up to him, I mean, he got his camera, he's fucking recording. He's, he's, he's doing the news, bro. He ain't just some dude with a phone. The cop just turned and punched him, bro, like, boom, like right there in the face and dropped him. And, and you can even hear other people in the video that's being recorded, like, oh, he just punched him. You know what I'm saying? And, and I get it, yo. I think for some of those people, maybe for some of these officers, maybe some of them didn't want to do it. But the repercussions of what would come of, you know, the defiance of not doing that it drove them to have to complete their job. But there are others that I believe were so happy to go into that forcefully. Well, I don't know. And, you know, um, just real quickly while you're listening to me. Uh, look up police suicide rates. So, I don't know how many the percentage of those that wanted to do it versus didn't want to. But, of the hundred, of the those that did it, a hundred percent did it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Of the those that were in the crowd moving, they were a hundred, they were a hundred percent there. Of those that of that crowd of po- cops that actually was shooting people and punching people and macing people and kicking people and the whole nine, mm-hmm. they they did it. Of that crowd that did it, I don't feel like breaking down how many wanted to, how many did it because it was their job. I don't know if it's your job to turn and punch a reporter straight in the face, like right. he, wow, dropped them. So taking. This um, Eric Gardner situation, remember? And, you know, I brought it up earlier. And, you know, that was a situation where a lot of people were talking to their, their, you know, it was a kitchen, it was a kitchen table kind of conversation that a lot of families had in their household. And we were one too. And a lot of people were split. Oh, when the cops come up on you, listen to them and do what you do. And, you know, because the video, he's just sitting there, he's like, I ain't do nothing. I ain't do nothing. Yeah. And they telling him to put his arms behind his back. Yep. He's like, look, no, not today, man. I'm just sitting here minding my business. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, sure. He, one could say he was a resisting arrest. 
One could say he was resisting arrest. And one could say he was just tired of, look, you guys are always messing with me. Like, and, and, and I believe that he might, he had reason to feel that way. I, I told a story before about um, there's, for some reason, my, I'm constantly, well, when I was living down here earlier and I was in co college years, constantly getting st just stopped, just stopped by cops. I'm talking like walking, not driving, walking. Right. Wherever I'm at. And me, I, I back then, I, I was <clears throat> one to, to just comply, you know what I'm saying? Because I never got messed with cross the line. They they would use their their position and their job to kind of like just use that as the bully. So whatever they ask me for, you're the cop here. So Absolutely. so many times they just ask me for my ID and I would just give them my ID. And they pull out their little shit and you know what I mean? And give me my ID back, maybe ask me a couple questions. You know what I'm saying? They never really like had me sit down on the ground or anything like that. It was usually always Quick and casual. Right. So I don't know how many little, you know, you know, thingy things, little notepads. Notepads that my name is in, full name, driver's license, birthday, yep. all that bullshit. Address. I don't know. But it's several. <laughs> I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's like and there's been times when I'm, I'm like, look, I'm just trying to go in the store, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't want uh, I mean, one time they caught me, I was coming out of, you know, the porn shop. So I was like, okay, all right, maybe, you know, that was what they do at the porn shop. But then a couple of times you caught me going to stores. Like, <laughs> they're just stopping you all over the place. Yeah, and it, it just be like, I'm walking to a store, cop might be getting out his, his, his car, and we make eye contact. That would be it. It wouldn't be the same cop. It would just, just be that simple eye contact. So, now it's like, damn, I can't make eye contact with anybody, or I gotta now. You gonna take up ten minutes of my time? Mm -hmm. You gonna? I don't want to give you all my information. Like, uh, do I have to? Like, why? It is such a pain in the ass. I didn't do anything. Why do I gotta give you my information? Why aren't you out here collecting everybody's information? Right. Give everybody the same respect that you're giving me. You know what I'm saying? Of taking their information as well. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that's what Eric Gardner was feeling. Like, look, I ain't doing anything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, can you at least talk to me and tell me what I did before you made this decision to come down here and drag me elsewhere? Right. You know what I'm saying? But regardless, what happened, happened. Mm -hmm. So everybody's like, well, you know, cops have a dangerous job. And, you know, the whole Michael Brown situation, because that was like right around that time yes. as well. Cops have a dangerous job. And 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 they deserve to make it home too. And, and the dude, he was, he was charging at the cop. And... And, you know, people, once again, family members that I respected, co-workers. Yeah, you know, cops have a dangerous job. And, you know, if you pull my gun, I'm chasing them too. And then I'm shoot them. You know what I'm saying? I had a, somebody said that to me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Fast forward to today. Long story short. Yeah, long story short. And it's like, you're right. Each individual situation is different, but the, for the person that was in that situation, how do you, you're right. Every cop, everybody deserves to make it home. Every guy deserves his day in court. Every criminal deserves his, to serve his sentence. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're not, it's not the cop's job to kill them. It's the cop's job to arrest them and take them in. And, and if the situation proceeds to that, then boom. But, you know. Sometimes there, there, there could be, there's a way to escalate and de-escalate. But, and, and I'm not pinpointing those individual uh, moments. They already happened. I'm not dissecting those individual moments. Right. But what I'm saying is for those cops that are involved, how do you get, how do you feel when you go home at night? Sure, you get to go home at night and you deserve to go home at night. But once you get home at night, how do you live with yourself? Exactly. Um, did you find anything? Yes, well? absolutely. Um, so reported in 2019, um, it was 228 deaths by suicide. 228? 228. Thousand? No. That's, 228. 
wow, I, I figured it would be more. No, and it's climbing, but yeah, that's as low and, as it and, is. And I wonder how many of those were, were guilt. I wonder how many of those were had nothing to do with for things that happened in the line of duty, things that they've done. Or how many of those were things that they done, got caught, and decided, look, man, I ain't going down for this. Let me pop myself. You know what I'm saying? So, Well, this says here 132 officers were killed in the line of duty, and that includes 911 illness and heart attacks. That that's not part of that number that you because I no that is that that's is a, completely a, a, a separate comparison. So in comparison to that, you know, okay, it's just slightly more. So we're killed in the line of duty. So it's not you know right. You know, it's a dangerous job, but you know, yeah. In 2018, it was 172 deaths but, due to suicide. So it's definitely gone up this year. Well, but I mean, my point is the reason why I said I think it should, I'm surprised it's not higher because the you would have way more police brutality uh like there are more reports of police brutality a year than that yes you know what i'm saying and it's like it's like i don't want to say the nazi germany's i don't want to take any i don't want to once again i don't want to compare cops to any of that i'm not and i'm not comparing the institution to any of that but there has to be something rooted in that 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 gives you moral fortification yeah you know what i'm saying like like there's a reason why the slave owners and the people that worked on the on, for the slave owners which was basically white people who were broke you know what i'm saying worked there and were able to do what they did and feel how they feel and not like go home and be like man to go home and, and in fact and talk to their wives and their wives be like yeah good job you know what i'm saying and here's some here's some stew and there were the kids like great job pa i want to be just like you i want to be slaves too you know what i'm saying kill them and hang them too there has to be a reason for that they can do that and feel that way and i feel like fuck man look in the mirror and be like i'm a monster yes i know it's, it's hard to fathom so you know there's have to be a reason why nazi germany and you know terrorists and and all these people they're, they're, there's something fortified in this, but this is just a job this is just right this ain't even an ideology this is just a job so why are you so fortified like you see now the cops are like i don't give a fuck about those cameras fuck these cameras no. cameras all around who cares about cameras we use cameras to catch you guys you don't use cameras to catch us yep you know what i'm saying so, that's exactly right like take the asian dude that was standing there the asian cop yeah for the george floyd thing yeah. Now, I'm sure, I don't know what his orientation is, but I'm sure he has somebody that cares for him. And he has somebody that he probably cares for. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm sure he get you know, he gets some nookie or some, some bussy, as they call it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. I said that <laughs> word on fucking air. But, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Even that one was shot me though. But <laughs> so I'm sure he, hey I but hey, maybe he does like bussy. <laughs> this is a funny word. Bussy. That is a weird word. I don't think that word should count. Like I've I, never heard that word. No. No. I, I know what it I can uh, just by the way it sounds, I think I can understand what it is. Which well, is these but I have are, never these cops are acting like some fucking bussies. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh especially my. the dude that was just standing there with his hand with like and he had felt point he's even screaming into people's faces like Yeah, I like, know. You know. Like back off. And then I guess when that wasn't working, he's like, Look, I'm just gonna annoy you guys mm -hmm. stand like this. You know? Yeah, you bussy. So, he acted like there was nothing going on. Yeah, straight bussy mode. <laughs> I'm in bussy mode. He <laughs> look at my bussy face. He looked no different than like a security mall cop. And, and so how did he go home and holler at his shorty? At the end of that day? At the end of that day and be like, yo, because this No, shit. what I want to know is the normally you arrest someone. It's the stuff's supposed to go. You arrest someone, put in a cop car, you take him to get charged, right? This guy never made it into the cop car. An ambulance had to come for him. When it did, he was out. Okay? That cop had to get back in his cruiser mm -hmm. 
and go not by himself because I believe there's two cops per cruiser, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So he has to get in that cruiser with his partner. The moment he got into that cruiser, they both get into that cruiser and those doors close. Yeah. How you One of them has to say to the other, yo, dude, yeah. did that just happen? Exactly. Like, exactly. How do you think it's going to play out? The, because they're not just going to go get back in and be like, what a day's work. Yeah. Take a sip of coffee and a donut. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it, there's no possible way you can't address and, it as soon as you're able to. And like I was saying, the Asian dude and the other dude, I, either they were partners or whatever, but they arrived together. So yes. they probably most likely left together. Exactly. You know, and this went on for four days before they were arrested, before one of them was arrested, and they're still out. Yeah. The, the Asian dude. So and I'm just choosing him, you know. No, How you're we, right. We're not singling you out. There's four of you to single out. You, you should be in jail as well, but I'm just using you as an example, bro. Others would, will be used as I examples, love, but today's your turn. I would love to know, you know, you as an example, because you just stood there. When, when you went home and you went to your, your, your lover... And now that I'm asking, how did you sleep that night? Because did your lover say, hey, man, you know, you did good out there. Did your lover give you a kiss? Did your lover, you know, take off, help yes. you dress and take off your clothes? You know you had you? to talk to whoever you, you, yeah. you, you see at the end of the did day. Did your lover, you know, let's, get, let's go to bed. And, and did your lover, you know, blow you? And did your lover, you know what I'm saying, put that thing, that thigh out on you because you did such a great job that day? You feel me? So how not only does how that cop that deserves to make it home to his family. Yeah, he does deserve to make it home to his family. But how does he live with himself? And how does that family live with themselves for living with them? With yeah, because the if, you know what I'm saying? If, you know, my dude was a cop and he came home to me after something like that happened, it'd be like, yo, what do you think that family's thinking right now? Like, the dude, like, what do you think that family's going through right now? Like, if we're sitting here in bed watching TV, getting ready to go to bed. What do you think that family's yeah. going, thinking? What do you think they're doing right now? You know what I mean? Like, so, so, so I, you can s shut the. I don't know what they might be doing. Let me, sh but let's go to I'm sleep. Your fuck. Nighty Let night. me go. Good night. Nighty night. You know what I'm saying? Let's put on Fox News. I, I don't know. Allegedly, probably, most Maybe. likely. So you know what I'm saying? Let's put on cop news or whatever. So, and that's what I'm saying, like, anybody who, who, who is this way, like, I would like to know, just talk to me, like, hey, I'll, I'll put the voice on your, on you so nobody don't even know that it's you, I'll do whatever you need me to do, just talk to me, I need to know, how do you sleep at night, how do you, yes. how do you say, you know, fuck it, you know what I'm saying, you get the criminals. I would like to look into that psyche. Yeah. You get the criminals, the people that say, hey, I'm a murderer, I'm a criminal, I'll, no, nah, blah, blah. I live by the gun. I'm a badass. I'm a bandit. I'm an outlaw. I get that. But you're not an outlaw. You're a cop. Yeah. Unless you're, you're a wolf in sheep's clothing. Unless you're, you're, you've infiltrated. You really are an outlaw. But, you're, but you know, you're not an outlaw. You're not going to go to anybody. Right? As far as I know, he's not going around talking about, yeah, I killed that motherfucker. I'll do it again. I hope he burns Hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I hope not. But regardless, you're a cop. Yeah. You're not an outlaw. The law... You're in the law. You're, You're in, in the, the law. law, exactly. So, how do you sleep? How do you live with yourself? How does the people that love you live with themselves for living with you? You know what I'm saying? Uh, where does it end? The person that killed, that, that choked out Eric Gardner. Sure, there was like four or five people on him or whatever. But the one that actually choked him out. How does your girlfriend, and boyfriend, and... and, and Everyone beyond that, how do they how do they feel? How do they live with themselves? Like, yeah, I mean it's a perfectly valid question. I don't yeah. want to know that too. Like, did you, were you proud of them? Were you like, yeah, that? Because I've never been through that, did, so I would yeah. like to know. Yeah, exactly. The cop shot Michael Brown. We already know how George Zimmerman feels. Do you guys feel like George Zimmerman? You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. George Zimmerman riding this shit to the bank. Do you guys feel like him? Because you know, I would like to know. It, it, it's important. I think the world would like to know, and you could just tell me, and I will convey it to the masses. Right. Now, you know, uh, the guy who, who, like I said, just stood there, Asian dude, please just tell me. Um, because 
if I could just speak for, you know, for myself, and I think a lot of people agree, and I've heard this elsewhere. There's a meme going around. And I don't know, the first time I heard it, Shannon Sharp said it. Then I saw a meme, like, the next day. So I don't know if the meme's from him. I don't know if he was repeating it. Whatever. Shannon, Shannon Shaw is kind of like my auntie Jason Whitlock. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that, too. Although, Jason Whitlock is no longer with Fox Sports anymore. Yeah, I know. He's out, so that's kind of... I'm hearing about I, that. I don't... I'm not... I'm so glad. What's going to be the source of my ire? Though? I know. I don't care anything but him. But he was my way of getting... I don't know if he's a fan of Fox News. Don't really care. But he was my fan. He was my way of getting information content from that perspective without going there and really studying it. Like, I can read shit from that, from that, ch- that network or even that, the conservative right. perspective. I can read it. I prefer to read it, but I can't. Can't like, hear it. I listen yeah, to it. Yeah, I can't listen to it, and I can't watch you say it. Yeah. Jason Whitlock was one of the few that I could watch say it. I could tell okay. him it. Because, you know, I can make fun of him and stuff like that. Yeah. But, yeah. So, anyway, okay. it's just like, yeah, I can read your bullshit, but you can't tell me your bullshit. <laughs> So, but in this case, I'm willing to make a difference, a change, and I'll listen to your bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so please, please tell me. And and, and like I said, the meme was basically, um, you guys always talk about black crime when you talk about the cops. You talk about these dangers. Who's you right? guys? The conservatives, I guess. Okay. Or even maybe the cops. You know, and it's like. And, and you know what? Yeah, I ain't gonna even say conservative because there's a lot of people who are not conservative at heart, but they spew that bullshit because we've been taught that cops are right. You know what I'm saying? Even niggas that do wrong, even people who do wrong, even people who probably aren't even here legally would probably say cops do right. You know what I'm saying? They can't do wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They probably believe that. Oh, in America, cops do right. Until they start seeing otherwise. So... And it might be even safer to teach your kids that. You know what I'm saying? Which is a totally deeper um, offshoot. But anyway, the, the meme or the, the sentiment is basically um, in reference to black and black crime and things like that. Yeah, there's black and black crime, but if Pookie kills Ray Ray, Pookie's going to jail for a long time. Yeah. But if the cops kill Ray Ray, it, nothing is not a big deal. So... Ray Ray's dead regardless. But if one person kills him, if I kill Ray Ray, if I kill Ray Ray and Pookie, I'm gone. I might even get, I ain't gonna get death penalty for Ray Ray and Pookie. Uh, But if I kill Ray Ray, Pookie, and uh, Penelope. (laughs) Oh, man. Now I'm getting the death penalty. For sure. I'm getting fried. But if the cop kills Ray Ray, he kills Pookie. I mean, Ray Ray, it was Ray Ray fault. Ray Ray shouldn't have fucking ran. Ray Ray shouldn't have been Ray Ray. <laughs> if he kills Pookie, Pookie shouldn't have been Pookie. Who, his name is fucking Pookie. You know, of course he's fucking guilty of something. You know what I mean? He probably did something last week that I should have killed his ass last week, but I didn't. I caught up with him today. Sorry, dude. Time to pay the pipe. Time to go. Yeah, time, you know. Yeah. But... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But if he killed both of them, all right, dude, did you have to kill two of them? We're going to have to put you, you know, we have to lay you off from this precinct. You know what I mean? First, we're going to give you pay while we do investigation. You know what I'm saying? You know, but then after we do our investigation, we're going to have to fire you. But don't worry about it. We're going to give you a recommendation at the next one because there's always some pookies and ray rays that need to be killed. But if he kills Penelope... Then he's definitely getting fired. He might have to now become a security guard. You know what I mean? But, and if he really, really kills Penelope, like, really bad, then he might go to jail. Okay. But he has to fuck Penelope up to go to jail. Okay. You know what I'm saying? If he just just kills Penelope, it's an accident. Yeah. You're going to lose your job. Ray Ray and Pookie? Nah, homie. No problem. Awesome. But if I kill Pookie or Ray Ray, I'm going to jail. And I kill Penelope, I'm getting fried. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> so, 
And so while the names on the meme may sound funny, um, it's it's real. You know what I mean? Like it, it's real, and and I think that also hits home because they see us as a bunch of pookies and Ray Ray. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you know, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Um, this Ray Ray just happened to be podcasting. This Pookie just happened to be selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? Right. But they all, you know, maybe one day the, the podcast is going to be selling drugs and the drug dealer is going to be, you know, well, hopefully we're going to kill his ass today. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and there has to be acknowledgement for that. That has to be acknowledged. That has to be, that has to be acknowledged not by the cops first. It has to be acknowledged by the population. Right. More people have to acknowledge that than the people that don't. More people have to acknowledge that than the amount of people that make excuses for Absolutely. it or deny it. You know what I mean? And then at that point, then the institution has to acknowledge it and change. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and the overseers of those institutions have to acknowledge that and change. And and until that happens, you know, it's going to be another Pookie, another Ray Ray, yes. another George, another, uh, you know, uh, Michael Brown, another Rice, you yeah, know, Tamir. It, it it just it, the names are so long. Sandra Bland, Breonna Taylor. The names are so long that that that. And these are just the famous ones. That even the famous names... These are the ones you hear about. Yeah, start. Yeah, they're famous because of what happened to exactly. them. Exactly. Even those names start to blend into each other. So it's like, I'm like, uh, Tamir Brown. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, and that's not even... Because there probably is a Tamir Brown that's probably been killed or beat up by the cops. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> you know, it, it, I don't think that's a that's something that... If you threw an algorithm, it's almost like there's an algorithm for this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's like there's a, a computer program that's algorithm that, look, it, it has to be. So then, so I get back to, once again, how do they live with themselves? You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't. And. Um, I can't imagine it. So, um, we were supposed to go into. <sighs> I'll grind our gears segment, in which I think that, you know, um, uh, I gonna, I don't think I'm going to grind my gears tonight. Yeah, understandably. Um, do you still have some stuff to get off your chest tonight? Um, I think I'll save this one. It's insignificant compared to the events that's yeah. happened. I so. don't really want to, like, even hock on that too much, but I do want to... You know, because I'm kind of like, kind of off like, once again with this. Um, How so? In the sense that when you talk about it, sometimes you're just like, man, enough. You know what I mean? Right. Enough, enough, enough. Let me set it to the side for a little bit. And what I was going to grind my gears on, actually... Was gonna be on the Epstein um, Netflix uh, documentary, which I think is a good documentary. I think it's an excellent one. I think they put it together very well. Yes, yes. Um, in terms of just production wise, but the thing that, that my thoughts on the Epstein documentary was, it yes, Epstein was an evil dude, and. He deserved way more than he got. And more. And his crew deserved more, way more than they got. And that's another ties into how do you, like, even take. They called up uh, one of the uh, people that worked there at the door. I don't know. He, he, he's kind of powerful, man. I don't want to be involved. Uh, I just want to do my job. Well, once again, you, you, you open the door. You let uh, in yeah. these 14-year-olds. How did you go home and, and you know. And, you know, and I bet you a lot of those situations, those those employees, they probably went home and made jokes about it. Like, you know. Like. I bet you it was like, oh, this this 
dirty old man had these girls over again. You know, it's, exactly. I, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was probably just within their their little circle and never went anywhere else, and, you know? And getting back to Pookie and Ray Ray, if Pookie and Ray Ray are criminals, Pookie and Ray Ray know that there is an inherent danger in doing what they do. Right. At any, do- any given time, their rivals, if not the cops, could come in right. and kill them. Joel Osteen, not Joel Osteen, Joel. <laughs> really? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, Freudian slip. Um, Epstein, he had to, he knew there was a, a, a risk to what he was doing. And probably some of the Absolutely, he just- in, in the top circle knew that there was a risk to what Hell he was yeah. doing. Hell so, yeah. So even they knew that they were criminals. That's why yeah. they fought so hard to beat the case. Right. You're only a criminal if you get caught, but you still know you're doing criminal things. Yes. But the people that were just taking these girls over there, getting, you know, be it cab ride drivers, mm-hmm. be it, you know, doormen, be it everybody that, that worked to to just cut the grass to whatever. If yes. You, if you knew... Anybody who fell witness. If so. you knew you were not a criminal, you, you didn't you didn't have the criminal mentality. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You won't Paco or Lou Gato. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Enrique, yeah. Ricardo, yeah. <laughs> you know, Juanes, whichever one whichever one might be out in the garden this morning. You know what I'm saying? Like like but you weren't you weren't you weren't like the sidekick to Esquire, you know. To Juan Pablo, you know what I mean? No, like, no, you were just the gardener that worked at fucking Epstein's house. Yeah, just you had no one of them anyway. Yeah, no allegiance to that. How did you sleep at night knowing that these girls are being whatever there? Exactly. Now that said, comparing that to say the R. Kelly situation, for me, I feel. Don't get me wrong, I feel for those those girls as well. Yeah, I feel for a lot of them, especially feel for the sisters in the beginning. Um. I feel, you know, there were rapes and things like that were going on. But one thing that I think it highlighted is, is that there is a lot of suburban child prostitution. Yes. And it's casual. Yeah, as hell. It's casual as hell. It's, it's so casual for, for little girls to think that going out and giving a massage is something that's that's great. Not all of them were down and out. No. There's no way in fuck one girl could be like, I brought them 80 girls and they all down and out. Exactly. You feel me? Like, maybe, maybe, maybe. They got that many down and out girls in, in there? Well, they all getting $200 a piece from this dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of money also going so There's through. a lot of $200 going <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. You know? That was the going rate, I guess. That and, was the proposed rate. And so that kind of plays into, like, the R. Kelly girls that he molested or whatever. When this was first going on, those who defended R. Kelly went after the girls. Right. The Epstein thing, nobody went after the girls. They was, oh, he's a monster. They went after the girls. They said they're just trying to get put on. They're just trying to get a career. They're just trying to do this. They're just trying to do that. How about their parents? They went after their parents. What about their parents? What about this, that, and the other? You know what I mean? The, they they slut shamed some of them. Yeah. Even some of the Cosby girls. Yep. So then, the thing is, is that. <laughs> but, at least with R. Kelly, you had to be infatuated with what he was. With without R. Kelly, it didn't work. With Epstein, these girls were willing to massage any dirty old man as long as he had. Two to three hundred dollars. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And they even said it. They didn't call him by his name. They said this old man. Uh, yeah. So, and in for my understanding, there would be other old men. I didn't finish the documentary, but the story is he also leased some of them out. That's right. We were getting there. We haven't yeah. um, finished it yet. <laughs> it's just a little bit of a thunderstorm here. So, you know. So with all that said, once again, it's not to diminish. Anybody victim state. Yeah. But like a lot of the girls will say, yeah, I started at this point and then I continued on for three, four years. 
Mm-hmm. So they continue on into do- adulthood, and some of them even implicate themselves in crimes and went on by basically saying they were virtually madams. Oh, yeah. Some of them were given promotions. Yeah. So they no longer had to massage as long as they brought in yeah. girls. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and, and some of them used the tactic of just bringing in the girl and you're just walking out. Exactly. You know Which seemed to be common because multiple yeah. of them had the same story. Exactly. It happened the same way. Exactly. So at some point... It, so they must have been coached to do that. Exactly. And, and at some point, they you also have to be complicit to be coached. You exactly. Know it's just no different than... Getting back to Pookie and Ray Ray. Okay. Pookie's the man on the block. He, you know, he got put on the drugs first. He's been slinging them drugs, slinging that cane, slinging that, that whatever you need, that rock, that weed, that meth, that, those, those miles, whatever you need. Uh, he, Pookie got it. So now he bring in Ray Ray. He teaches Ray Ray the game. Ray Ray was just a young dude. Had no, you know, maybe single mom, lived in the ghetto, got all these siblings. He needed money, too. You hear the story all the time why people yeah. get out and have to start hustling. Absolutely. But nobody feels sorry for them. Nobody feel bad for them. If anybody, they're like, you're part of the black-on-black crime. You're the reason why we got to send these tanks in I know. to kill your whole neighborhood. It's because you guys won't stop selling drugs. Nobody sent tanks in into West Palm Beach to fucking blow up and bulldoze those mansions that's right and bring those rapists and those molesters out into the street and put knees on their faces absolutely no one in fact many times the way that the netflix thing makes a scene seems like the fucking uh cops there were a bunch of bussies as well but they just bussies in the act in the direction the other direction the prosecutors and you know yeah bussy nation bussy nation <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. So it's like, yo, so Pookie's selling drugs. So of course Pookie's going to be like, nah, fuck this. I got to get off the block too. So Pookie's going to get Hameem. He's going to get Baron. He's going to get little homie Jay. He's going to get all kinds of homies on, on, on his tip. You know what I'm saying? So now he got him a little army. Shit. Pookie probably brought in about 20 dudes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, to, to help Ray Ray's empire. It's that same ladder. Exactly. So, it's, it's that it's that corporation ladder. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same, exactly. And each of those people are going to then bring in more people into it. And it's classic. And they all, yeah, they all getting fiends. They all getting people to, foot soldiers. It's all the same. But nobody gives a fuck about that operation. When they come in to break up that operation, they come in to break up that operation Regardless, if they catch Pookie on the block by himself, yes. they they ripping Pookie out and they killing him. Yep. And nobody gives a fuck. He deserved it. So, whereas with this, all these girls are like, oh, you was misunderstood. And Pookie might have started selling drugs when he was 12. You know? And, yeah. And, and he, he didn't get killed until he was 22. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, with these girls, how long do they got in the game? I mean... If you're an Epstein masseuse, like, I don't know if, if, if your life is in danger, right. but eventually you're going to get out of the game. Well, eventually you're going to also expire yeah. for them, for, exactly. for Epstein himself. I mean, he likes to start about exactly. 14, it sounds like, you know, but it may seem that once they get to like 18, because mm-hmm. that's what it sounds like between 18 and 19 is the cap cut yeah. off for, I think that's too old for him. Exactly. You know, because you don't. You haven't heard of many of them that are over the age of 18, and at that 19, point, that stayed around. And at that point, you can go and continue your life. I don't think Epstein's trying to kill you. Right. If you're like, all right, Joe, I mean, Jeff, it's been nice. Yeah. You, know, you sure you don't want any more mas- massages? Nah, you're too old. All right, then I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Right. He'd probably be like, cool, because something tells me there were some that did. That did. Yeah. They were done and they bounced. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They were cool with what they did. Like, not all teen prostitutes, just like not all... Teen drug dealers hate the game. Right. Not all teen prostitutes hate the game. Right. I don't know the percentage. Don't care the percentage. Not asking the percentage. The The point that I'm making is, is that it was more about teen prostitution than which should have been the shine on on this. Then, yeah, he was a monster. 
but we don't need documentaries about how bad he is. We need documentaries about how bad the the cops are, how easy they can be fucked, how politicians can easily be fucked, how these things are running rampant and it's being brushed over with. If we love these young girls, we don't want them to be destroyed, then shine a light on teen prostitution so we can get rid of this shit. Absolutely. Shine a light on how easy it is for a fourteen for a couple fourteen year old girls to take a cab <laughs> across a fucking bridge. Exactly. <laughs> like like they'd be like, yeah, she just walked to me. I can't go by myself. I can't go by myself. You gotta go. Don't worry about it. I'm coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I did that for like several years. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so that's all. Um, Damn, I mean. The R. Kelly girls had to have the carrot dangled in front of them constantly. It sounded like they did. Yeah. You know they saying? weren't as easily they, lured. They kind of had to look, you want this career? This is the way you're going to get the career. Because, right. Cause, and, and I'm not talking about the, the ones that stuck by his side and, and all that. I'm talking about the ones that he just smashed and got rid of. You know, right, they right, had, right. They had the the candle, you know, and, and that's yes. like, that's even a little bit of the groupie mentality as well. Here's the carrot, you know. You want a little bit of this fame, you know, for the night. Cool. And some people want it. Some people think that maybe they can get a little bit more. Some people maybe if he just saw me in this light, he'll like me or she like me. I don't right. Know. But this was different. These girls got what they came for. It was it was an instant gratification. Yeah. And thus they wanted to go back. Yeah, you preying on my youthfulness, but you can only do that once or twice. Even when you're 14, 15, you know right from wrong. Yeah. Otherwise, you know what I'm saying? Like, otherwise the world would be fucked if no 14, 15 year old knew right from wrong. Mm-hmm. And this whole adolescent brain bullshit, I'm a guy of science. I'm not going to turn away, turn that away and say it's not real. Uh, frankly, I... I think I agree with it. A well, little bit. I know that one of them said that she, so far. I mean, again, we I, we have not finished the the um, the rest of the the show, but I so far only one of them admitted that she was a virgin that I had seen yeah. out of you know the, the the there was a lot of them that actually came out in the first and second episode that we watched, and like I said, out of those first two episodes, only one admitted to being a virgin. The other ones hadn't. Which I thought that it would be something a virgin would mention, especially when it comes to a situation like this. Mm-hmm. You know, they would just be one of those things. I was a virgin until he did this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, and like I said, only one of them did it. So I wonder if there were more. And But if there was, though, for those that were not, again, these are 14-year-old girls. You can't, I'm not at all saying that what happened was, was any any of these girls fall in any way not at all but i would think that you know you would have an idea of what could possibly happen when you're going to massage an old man like i feel i wonder if they were led to believe something completely different as well to be led there i mean um as far as their virginity and things like that me personally i don't really care uh if they were or they weren't uh, it's kind of irre- irrelevant because mm-hmm. it's not about their sexuality their their lust or like for sex one way or the other but i kind of get what you're saying like if if you're a virgin and somebody's saying hey go massage this old guy you might you, why don't you find that ewy you know what i'm saying right or but then again it's the money you know oh, i, I think do the money massage. talks so yeah so, so the it's, question is is it's very if, hard to say no so to, I'm sure. Is, is if stripping, if strip clubs could allow any age in, how many 14-year-old strippers would we have? Oh, yes. I, think we would I have agree. A lot. I agree. I think we would have a lot. So these are questions that have to be addressed. Are these impoverished because of impoverished situations? Is it because uh, sexuality is so... Um, is dulled down as far as girls go. They're used for it. They're this for it. So therefore, uh, girls understand that they can also use it the other way. Yeah. Um, is it, you know, is it just, um, yeah. Is there more to teen prostitution? Is it in the sense that there's a trick to the trade that the public need to know? There's questions that need to be asked that, that that's what we're going to leave with this show on um 
and maybe hopefully as the, the episodes go on we can find answers to those questions but absolutely because i would like to yeah um touch base on it again once we catch up a little bit more yeah but it's, it's once again it's not that i don't feel sorry for these girls at all i do i feel i ha i'm empathetic to them what they went through absolutely even the ones that probably even loved it and would do it again i still feel for you you know what i'm saying uh hell i feel for pookie and ray ray that are out there on the block slinging that that whatever even though they got more money than i have yeah but every day is a struggle trying to make that dollar because for all of them because if circumstances were different if they were exposed to something different maybe pookie and ray ray would never even thought twice about the block um and 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 that's that but you know everybody's circumstances are different yeah um so you know uh, no negativity to anybody except for Jeff Espin <laughs> and, and that chick. She needs to be caught and thrown in jail. Yeah, that's a weird situation. Look, it's nothing wrong with being kinky. If you want to be kinky, be kinky, but you know right from wrong. Just like 14 year olds know right from wrong, 50 something year old ass, grown ass people know right from young. You know what you were doing was wrong. Absolutely. If, if you wanted to be kinky like this, I think with that money they could have had, that's just one fetish you got to let go. Exactly, man. Like, because find something else, something legal. Because pedophilia, I don't think, is even about sex. I think it's about something else. It's about... That's a chemical imbalance of the brain. It's, uh, it's, I, think, I think that's like taking S&M and, and stretching it. You know what I'm saying? Warping it into a perverse kind of situation. You know how S&M... Is more about control and just like you know, beating it, yeah, medium yeah. SM could be. Mm -hmm. I think that's the control part is what really gets them off. That like, right. I'm this this figure, and yeah, you're this little, yeah, thing, you know, what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, you're right. And maybe there's beauty in that, or maybe there's frailty in that. I think that's the controlness, absolutely. But I get to control it, yeah, well, so yeah. I don't absolutely. know if I explained it right, frankly. I don't even know if i even want to understand it that's just me throwing a little bit of critical thinking at it but, right um yeah i think that uh um yeah he he knew right from wrong um there's nothing wrong i i don't want like people to think that anybody who's kinky is is evil no kinks and and evil are not uh that is not a synonym for evil right you know so right um no um there's you know in fact in the next show um i want to talk about that doja cat chick i've been meaning to talk about her for a couple of yeah shows that's right so that's yeah so stay tuned for uh 111 because we are on 110 now no no we're on 109. 109 stay tuned for 110 so oh mm -hmm. shit 10 coming up after this one that's but, right all righty with that man it was a great show it was a great great show i want to thank um uh tlg uh jason morton the mm -hmm. lawyer guy yeah uh for uh call have allowing us to call him and to uh you know giving us his time yes uh, i look forward to having him on the show again as well as uh jefe fresh Bar for uh el presidente yeah well in, in fr the, Freshville. The, the future El Presidente of Freshville. He hasn't been elected yet. And the other side is trying. But well, good luck to him. His campaign slogan is, We all eat. And I think that should I love be, it. I, I love it too. I think that should be the slogan for, for Biden, for the Democrats here. We all eat. Oh. I think that should be the slogan for the protesters. Although we there is some. All eat. There is some fat that needs to be trimmed. But. But, yeah, but I love the slogan. We all, it's all eat. love and peace. We all eat. If we all eat, then we all make it. If we don't, then there's going to be more of this. So, with that said, everybody, uh, it was a great show, and I love my babe. I love my babe. <laughs> peace, everybody. And we're out of here. Hey guys, thanks for watching, and to see more T4J content, please visit TMC4JMC.com. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe down below. That's what's up. Peace.